So, for today class, we'll be continuing our discussion regarding yesterday's topic, which is all about the heterogeneous system. So, yesterday class, we were talking about the colloidal system. Now, this time naman, let's talk about the coarse dispersion. Now, again, class, one main big, one big difference between a colloidal from a coarse dispersion is that, simply, class, it's the size. Okay? Colloidal, medyo mas maliit siya as compared to our, ano, our uh, coarse dispersion. Okay? Dispersion class are basically any particle, any substance that has a particle size greater than 0.5 micrometers. Okay? If you remember class, ang range kasi ng ating colloidals, okay, uh, ng ating colloids would be at a nanometer range up to 0.5 micrometer. Now class, for coarse dispersion, it's 0.5, it's higher than 0.5. Okay? And it's usually characterized by relatively fast sedimentation. Okay? Again, another factor class to consider sa colloids natin, matagal silang mag-settle down. Okay, normally, it usually takes hours, probably days. Okay, as compared to coarse dispersion, okay, prior to use, always siyang sinishake. Okay, para mag, uh, mag, uh, tawag ito, ma-redisperse yung ating mga particles. Okay, caused by gravity or other forces. So, particles do not pass through normal filter paper. Uh, okay, and dialyze through semi-permeable membrane. So, particles do not diffuse, unlike that of colloids. Okay, colloids, nag-diffuse sila, di ba? Because of the... Uh, the property that they have, which is known as the Brownian movement. Okay, they are always in constant motion. Okay, an examples class of course dispersion would be, of course, suspensions and emulsions. Right? So again, class, here are some things that you have to remember about course dispersions. Okay, and then basically class, it's divided to two. Okay, either a suspension, a course dispersion is either a suspension or an emulsion. Okay, so class, if are you familiar with what a suspension is? Okay, ang pinagkaya may itsura niya. All right, medyo? All right, very good. Okay. So basically, class, ang pinagkaiba naman kasi ng isang suspension sa isang emotion, most often than not, class, mas malapot ang ating emotions because it can either be oil in water or water in oil. Okay? As to suspension sa man, class, oftentimes, ang suspending medium natin or ang tatawag na external phase would be water most of the time. Okay? But of course, class, there is a big difference between the two. So let's first uh, discuss them individually. Start class with suspension. Okay? So, suspensions class are basically coarse dispersion in which insoluble ang ating mga particles. And take note of this class, ha? in suspensions, ang particles natin are always solid. Okay? Unlike that kasi class of emotions, most of the time, emotions are a combination of two liquids, two immiscible liquids. Okay? I hope you uh, na-intindihan nyo yun. So, class, pag emotion, liquids ang pinagsasama ko. Sa suspension class, one is solid, the other one is liquid. Alright? And the solid, in this case class, is always insoluble to the liquid medium. Okay? Now, um, particles have a diameter of greater than 0.1 micrometer, and particles exhibit Brownian motion if the dispersion has low viscosity. Only if the dispersion has low viscosity. Okay? Yung, yung solvent, or kumbaga yung dispersion medium na ginamit natin, baba ang kanyang solubility, uh, sorry, ang kanyang viscosity, then the suspension class can can start to exhibit Brownian motion. Pero again, ang Brownian motion naman kasi, mas, uh, mas common ito sa ating colloids. Okay, all colloids uh, exhibit Brownian movement, Brownian motion. At unless you make the um, dispersion medium very thick. Now class, why do we use suspension? Okay, the reason for that class is because certain drugs are chemically unstable in solution form. Okay, pero once you make them into suspension form, they, they become more stable. Let me give you a good example class. Solutions. Okay, ano ba ang problema natin with solutions? Okay, solutions class, ang pinaka main component niyan is water, correct? And as you all know class, water is a very good medium for bacterial growth. Okay, for growth of anything. At the same time class, water can also cause degradation through hydrolysis. Okay. Another another um ito, another um effect ng water natin would be increase bacterial growth. Lalo na kung may sugars or carbohydrates sa ating solution. Diba? May sugar. Okay? So paboritong kainin niya ng ating bacteria. Tapos may tubig pa. So nagkakaroon tayo ng bacterial growth. That's why class ang solutions natin sometimes umiiksi yung mga shelf life nila. Umiiksi ang shelf life. Now class, say for example, antibiotics Okay? So, antibiotics class, pag nilagyan ko yun ng tubig, mabilis siya masisira through hydrolytic reactions. 
Okay, like say for example, amoxicillin. Pero quite more often than not, we find amoxicillin in its suspension form. Okay, why? Kasi class, kung kailan mo siya gagamitin, saka mo na siya lalagyan ng water. And therefore class, yung shelf life ng aking amoxicillin mas tumatagal. If I keep it at room temperature after adding water, okay, usually it lasts for 7 to 14 days. So depende yun. Okay, of course, kasi if you refrigerate it, mas lalong tatagal yung shelf life ng ating amoxicillin. Right? So na guess ba class? That's why class, some drugs are best prepared as suspension. Another reason class, okay, why maganda gamitin minsan ang gamot as a, a sorry, compound drug as a suspension or the drug delivery system niya is as a, as a suspension is because the particles themselves are insoluble in water. Okay? Alam naman natin, class, ang pinaka-safe, o sabi natin, pinaka-common na ginagamit nating solvent. Okay? Para tunawin natin mga medications will be, of course, water. Now, not all drugs are soluble in water. There are ways we, we can do, okay, to make a drug water-soluble. Okay, pero kung pwede naman natin bawasan yung mga steps na yun, just to make the drug a lot cheaper, then let's make it into a suspension na lang. Okay, insoluble siya sa tubig, but if I can suspend it there, okay, then I make, the, no, I make better use of my medication. Okay? So again, class, reason for making drugs into their suspension form, simply because we want it to last longer. Okay? To make it more chemically stable. Now, in terms of bioavailability class, tamina naman kayo sa term na ito, di ba? The B... Iti, tama? Okay, familiar na kayo sa term na bioavailability. Sino ang mas bioavailable? Solutions or suspension? Okay. Uh, wait lang, sino naman chat box? Baka may mag-chat. Alright. So class, sino mas bioavailable? When we say bioavailable class, this one refers to the amount of drug entering the blood. So basically, kasi class, ang assumption natin lagi is the more drug entering the blood, the more effective the drug is, right? Okay, so yun yung assumption natin. Now class, which of the two is more bioavailable? Solutions or suspension? Katingin nyo lang. Okay? Suspensions? Solutions? Okay, so we're having, ano? All right. So, class, just so you know, ah. Right, all right, very good. Okay, so I think majority of you answered solution. And that's correct, class. Solution, okay, is more bioavailable than suspensions. Okay, for one memory, isa lang naman, class, eh. Ang solution kasi is purely water-soluble. Alam naman natin, class, iba, anong requirement for a drug to be absorbed into the bloodstream? It must exist in its aqueous, water-soluble form. Okay? So therefore, class, between the two, tandaan nyo sa suspension class, may insoluble particles ako dyan. Okay? Kaya between the two class, solution and suspension, mas bioavailable definitely si solution because it's more water-soluble. Okay? Suspension still have uh, insoluble particles here. Yun, very good, yes. Okay? Because it's water-soluble. Pero class, between suspension and capsule, sino ang mas bioavailable? Okay? Ay, sinulot ko na pala. Never mind. Okay, capsules, okay, between suspensions and capsules, mas, uh, water, um, sorry, mas bioavailable si suspension, and of course, between tablets and capsules, mas bioavailable si capsule. Kasi si tablet, kailangan niya pa mag-undergo ng disintegration. I think something that you've learned already in dosage form, right? Pharmaceutical dosage form. Alright. So, yun siya. Now, class, a suspension is mainly composed of two things. Kung sa college class, meron tayong disperse, dispersion phase at saka dispersion medium, okay, in a suspension, or in a, sorry, actually generally this one is for a course dispersion, we have the internal phase and the external phase. Okay? So basically, class, ano ba internal phase? Internal phase simply the solute. The external phase is the solvent. Alright? Make sense? Easy, right? So kung mga class, kung pinag-usapan natin ay colloids, ito si dispersion phase. Okay, ito naman si dispersion medium. Okay, so internal phase class simply consists of the insoluble solid particles. Okay, siya it not na di-disperse natin sa isang suspending medium. Now, suspending medium class, okay, is generally aqueous. So most of the time, it's water. Okay, but it can be an organic or an oily liquid as well. Okay, pero basta basically class, basta suspension na pinag-uusapan natin, it's a combination of a solid and a liquid. That is 
And the solid, which we're in the solid, is insoluble to the liquid. All right? Okay. Now, but why do we want the solid particles to be suspended in the, in the, in the suspension? So, kung baka, kung ito yung suspension ko, ito, kunwari, ito, kunwari, karami ang tubig, bakit gusto ko kumakalat yung mga insoluble particles ko? Hindi ba pwede, sir, na ganito na lang? Ano ba? Ito yung aking liquid. Andito lahat ng insoluble particles ko. Nakaseto na. Okay? So, class, between A and B, sino mas ideal pharmaceutically? Si letter A ba o si letter B? Okay? Definitely. Very good. That's A. Para equal yung pag-administer nung drug. Very good. Okay, Mr. Reyes. Okay? Kasi, class, di ba, pag nagbigay tayo, ano ba, one teaspoon of the suspension, isipin nyo na lang, class, kung nagsettle sa ilalim ang suspension. Yung insoluble particle, which is your active drug. Nasa ilalim yan. Pagkuha ng patient, yung taas lang nakuha niya. Which is technically just water. So, wala siya makukuha ang gamot, correct? Wala siya makukuha ang gamot. So, that's why, class, it's important that suspensions, yes, sabaw lang ang makukuha niya. Technically. Okay? So, kailangan, class, yung, yung 5 ml na makukuha niya, may gamot. At alam natin kung ilang gamot, or, uh, tawag doon, yung dose ng gamot na yun should be always be equal. Kung solution kasi to class, to now na yun eh. So, wala problema. So, this will not be a problem for solutions. But for suspensions class, again, insoluble ang particles natin. So, kailangan, kaya lagi shake well before use ang nakalagay sa isang suspension. Okay? Para hindi lang sabaw ang makuha ng patient natin. Right? So, there are three types of suspensions class. Basically, we have the oral, which is the most common one. Okay? Ginagamit for antibiotics, antacids, maalox, it's a suspension. Okay? Magnesium hydroxide. Right? So, kailangan uh, i-shake mo na yun bago gamitin. Okay? And radio opaque suspensions. Now, there are also externally applied suspensions designed for dermatologic, cosmetic, and protective purposes. Okay? Like calamine. This, a good example of this is calamine. Calamine. Ay, sorry. Lotion. Familiar kayo sa calamine lotion? Alright, good. Ginagamit ito para sa mga itchiness. It's an antiprotetic medication. Saan mo, kinagat ka ng lamok? Okay, makatin. Pahingan mo ng calamine. Okay, para, mal, ano, para mawala yung kate. Okay, may kakilala kang makate? Okay, paliguan mo ng kalamay. Okay? Anyway, so, concentration. Uy, bumenta. Ito pa, no? Alright, so anyway, concentrations class of uh, this percentage should always uh, may exceed 20%. Right? Now, of course, next one class is a parental suspension. Pero please take note of this, ha? This is rarely used. Okay? Madalang gamitin ito kasi... Tandaan yung insoluble particles to, atas padadaanin mo sa bloodstream. Right? Kaya rare na ginagamit ka sa mga parental suspensions. Parang never pa ako nakakita ito in practice, pero apparently, there are parental suspensions. So, I was trying to look for one. Okay, gagawin sa example, wala akong makita. Okay, meron mga lumang drugs na ginagamit as parental suspensions, pero I think nowadays, hindi naman na ginagamit siya. Right? Pero just in case, okay, usually contains 0.5 to 30% solid particles. Majority pa rin dapat liquid. Okay? Now, viscosity and particle size are significant factors because they can affect the ease of injection and availability of drugs in depot therapy. Now, in terms of depot therapy class, okay, pwede rin pala ito. Nakakita ko nito, IM suspensions. Okay? IM, intramuscular. Now, class, yun yung sino sa uh, mga medications na pwede natin ibigay sa muscles to create a depot. Baka siya familiar with the term depot, I hope. Familiar ba kayo sa term na depot? Ano tawag? Depot. It's a depot. Okay, why do we create depots? Whenever we do depot class, okay, normally ang, ang ginagamit natin is an intramuscular route. Pwede rin naman subcutaneous pero mag inject ka ng pellets. Like estrogen pellets, say for example. Okay? Uh, yung mga contraceptive uh, pellets, yung nilalagay dito. Alright? I-insert dito yung pellets para isang saksakan lang, tapos good for how many years na yun, na ikaw ay hindi mabubuntis. Okay? So now, class, usually for depot therapy, okay, ginagamit natin ito class is intramuscular route. Okay? Because number one, muscle is um, poorly perfuse. It's a poorly perfuse organ. Ibig sabihin, konti lang kasi yung blood, blood na dumarating sa muscles natin. So class, if you put medications in your muscles, ang tendency is dahan-dahan lang yan nilalabas papunta sa bloodstream. Hence, you're creating a depot. A depot class is simply a storage site. Okay? 
actually you learn more about this about pharmaceutics when you start discussing about um, routes of administration. Okay, so basically let's just leave it at that. Muna. A depot simply a storage site. So naglalagay nag nag iimbak ka kung bago ng gamot sa isang bahagi ng iyong katawan. All right. Normally class ang examples mga gamot na ginagamit as this like this would be antipsychotic drugs. Okay, pwede yon. Right and others. Antibiotics pwede rin naman. Now, what are the desirable qualities of a suspension? So basically, class of suspension should settle slowly. Okay, mabagal lang siya. Hindi siya ganun kabilis mag-settle down. Okay, and it's readily redispersed upon gentle shaking. Okay, so dapat konting alog lang uh, mag-redisperse na agad yung ating um, suspension. So the particle size of the suspension it should remain fairly constant throughout long periods of undisturbed standing. Now, class, in reality kasi, the problem with suspensions is, sometimes, class, nagkukumpul-kumpul siya. Okay? They, they form into ag, ano, um, agglomerates or aggregates. Okay? So, nag-aggregate sila, class, at minsan, yung aggregation na ginagawa nila is medyo matigas. Kaya nangyari, class, mahirap siyang i-redisperse. You need to put a lot of force para lang mag-redisperse sila. And that's a good sign, class, na hindi maganda yung pagkagawa suspension. Kasi, again, a suspension should be easily redispersed Upon gentle shaking lang. And this is, the suspension should pour readily and evenly from its container. So in terms of its viscosity, in terms of its pourability, okay, it should be consistent. Kaya't lumalabas siya sa lalagyan niya. So, in terms of dispersion stability class, the ideal dispersion would be they should, the particles should not interact. When I say should not interact class, they should not not form aggregates. Hindi dapat sila magkumpul-kumpul. Eh, ang problem kasi class sometimes with suspensions, the, in the insoluble particles, technically class, all these particles have charges. Okay? And similar charges na mga yan. So kung negative ang charge ng isang particle, negative din to. Pero minsan kasi yung repulsive force nila is not enough, okay, which causes them to stick together. Nag-stick sila ganyan. So they tend to form aggregates. And the problem is class, pag nag-form ng aggregates, lumalaki yung size nila. Okay, and for an ideal dispersion, particles are of uniform size and exhibit Brownian movement. However, in reality, for suspensions class, particles are not uniformly sized and they are subject to aggregation. Okay, clumping, okay, and become more heterogeneous with time. Okay, mas nagiging, mas nagiging distinct yung separation between the, dis the external phase and the internal phase. Okay, please remember class, ha, since we're talking about coarse dispersion, Ang terms na gagamitin ko would be internal, external phase. Ang colloids, dispersion phase, dis uh, at saka dispersion medium natin. Okay? Now, what are some of the interfacial properties of the suspended particles? Okay? Now, class, there are three properties ng ating mga particles that are mostly used for suspension. Okay? They can flocculate. Okay? So, they have uh, what we call, they have the ability to flocculate. Okay? So, that's the process of forming a light fluffy conglomerates that are held together by, take note of this, ah, weak van der Waals forces. Now, that's okay. Kung sakali man, class, magkumpul-kumpul ang inyong uh, agents, ang inyong suspension, okay lang, basta flocules lang na form nila. Okay? Flocules, class, are the products of flocculation. Okay? Bakit flocules? O bakit, ano, bakit maganda ang flux? Okay? Kasi, class, kung flux lang yun, they are simply held by weak van der Waals forces. So, alam nyo naman, diba, that van der Waals force, the weakest force existing that, exi that, that we have. So, konting shake lang ganyan, maghihiwalay na sila ulit, which is a good thing. Okay, which is a good thing. Now, class, ang ayaw natin mangyari sa ating mga, ano, sa ating uh, internal phase for suspension is when they start forming aggregates. Kasi class, aggregation is the process wherein particles adhere by stronger forces, which creates a compacted cake. Compacted cake. Class, na try nyo na ba maghalo ng cornstarch at saka tubig. Okay? Natry nyo yes, na? Alright, good. Now class, try nyo ito minsan na, iwan nyo lang siya. Okay? Huwag nyo kakaluin. Iwan nyo lang. Okay? Let it stay for maybe one hour. Papasin nyo kasi maghiwala yun. Maghiwala yung cornstarch at saka yung tubig. Yes, okay? sir. Masisettle down yung cornstarch na yan eh. Tatanda nyo kasi you're actually making a suspension when you are combining a cornstarch water slurry. Yan yeah, di ba pang parapot yun ng ano, ng, uh, ng, ng niluluto? Okay? So, class, if you don't apply heat kasi to that, okay, technically it remains as a suspension. 
Kasi you need heat kasi class para mag-solubilize, para ma-convert yung uh, ang ating ano, dito yung starch, ma-broken down para mas maging malapot yung uh, solution natin. Okay, kaya tayo nag-apply ng heat o nilalagay sa kumukulong uh, niluluto natin. Now, class, if you don't put heat, maghiwala yan. At ang tendency, class, tumitigas yung cornstarch. Okay, after a while. Pag tumigas yan, class, that's actually a process known as caking. And suspensions, class, can actually uh, result to caking din. Okay, we're in class, there's a growth and fusing together of, take note of this, hindi lang sila, class, aggregates na. They start to form crystals. And as you all know, class, crystals are very strongly bonded to each other. Okay, mas malakas ang bonds nila. So, hindi siya ganun kadaling basagin. Okay? Okay, starts to form crystals in the precipitate to produce solid aggregates. Okay, solid na yan. Now, class, uh, kaya normally, pag aggregation kasi, pwede pa natin gawa ng paraan yan eh. Basta i- ano mo lang siya, i-shake mo siya ng maigi. Okay, pero once na the suspension starts to form cakes, okay, yung naging solid na siya, wala nang pag-asa yun. Tapo na yung suspension. Kasi hindi mo na mariridistribute yan. Naging crystals na siya eh. Right? So, class, between the three, Okay, these are the properties of our uh, internal phases in a suspension. So, ideally, class, which of the three properties ang gusto natin i-maintain sa kanya? Loculation, aggregation, or caking? Okay, which of the... Okay, definitely, class. We want our suspension, okay, in terms of its interfacial property, we want to keep it at its... Flo ano, gusto natin mag-stay lang siya as a flux. As, as, as flux. Okay, sa so flocculation lang. We don't want it to start aggregating or caking. Kasi normally, class, aggregation, okay, reversible pa to, pero once nag-cake na yan, it's usually irreversible. Okay? Now, so in terms of, ano, class, in terms of, um, sa flocculation, okay, so there are actually two, dalawa kasi pwede mangyari sa suspension natin, eh. Okay, in terms of its electrokinetic property. Flocculation, ibig sabihin, nag-create tayo ng flux, okay, where it's just loose aggregates, or pwede siya maging deflocculated system. A deflocculated system class simply means a uh, particle exists in the suspension as individual entities, meaning hindi talaga sila dikit-dikit. Okay? In a flocculated system class, again, itong particle ko pwedeng bonded siya sa isa pang particle. So again, this bond is simply van der Waals forces. So weak yan. Konting alog, mag-break apart yan. In a deflocculated system class, never nagbabond yung mga particles. Okay? Never siya nagbabond. Now, in a flocculated system class, particles tend to settle rapidly, but it's easily resuspended. In a deflocculated system, particles do not settle rapidly. So, technically, para siyang colloid. Okay? Now, in a flocculated system class, okay, even though it creates forces, it binds, it binds to each other, okay, the, the, the internal phase binds to each other, then dahil weak ka ng forces, they do not form cakes. Okay, as compared to the deflocculated system, once na nag-aggregate sila, okay, they tend to form a hard cake. Okay? They tend to form a hard cake. Now, a flocculated system class usually after settling clear, creates a clear boundary okay, between the sediments and the supernatant fluid. But however, again, it can easily be resuspended. Unlike that class of a flocculated system, even after settling, the supernatant liquid remains cloudy at the same time, may cake ka na. Okay, a solid cake here. Alright? So, technically speaking, class, if we try to look at it, mas maganda yata ang deflocculated system kaysa sa flocculated system. Pero ano ang risk, class, kapag ang ating suspension exists as a deflocculated system? Okay, the risk, class, of forming a cake is much higher. Now, between the two, class, sinong mas ideal? Okay, may, ano, um, ito, mabagal nga mag-settle, pero nag-perform ng cake? Or mabilis mag-settle, pero I can easily redisperse it? Right? So between the two class, which one do you think is more ideal? It's, an, it's a much ideal system to be adopted for our suspensions. Okay? Alright. Anyone else? Meron ba kayong alam? Okay. So anyway, class, yes, true. Okay, mostly class, mas magandang ang system na ina-adapt ng ating mga suspension is a flocculated system. Okay? We try to use class, or we try to keep our particles in a flocculated system as compared to the deflocculated system. Because again, sa defloc class, once naging cake niya is irreversible. Okay? So once naging cake, irreversible. Unlike that of a flocculated system, mag-set lang man siya, at least konting alug lang, magagamit ko pa siya. Alright? 
Okay. So, since we're talking about this na naman, alam naman natin kasi, ba, nag, nag, uh, nag-settle down ang isang suspension. Kasi we try to keep it as a flocculated system. Okay? Now, the question here now is, how fast are my sediments, or are my, or, ano, how fast will my internal phase settle? Okay? Siyempre, class, kung ako'y gagamit ng isang suspension, ayoko naman ang pag-alog ko, nagsettle agad. Wala pang 10 seconds. Okay? So, paano ko siya magagamit, right? How can I get a uniform dose? So, siyempre, class, gusto ko naman na medyo mabagal siya mag-settle down. Okay? So, how will I know, class, ang rate of settling niya? Okay? So, the formula, class, that we use to, um, dito, to compute for how fast the velocity at which a suspension starts to settle is what we call the Stokes Law. Okay? So, yun ang ginagamit natin, class, to compute for the velocity of sedimentation. Now, normally, class, free settling occurs in a dilute suspension. Pag sabi kong free settling, mabilis mong magsak. So, kapag ang suspension mo, class, is very dilute, babagsak agad yung, excuse me, babagsak agad yung, um, yung internal phase mo. Now, what about kung masyad namang concentrated ang suspension mo? Ang mangyayari naman is, nagkakaroon ng hindered settling. And this one does not obey, excuse me, Stokes Law. Alright? Normally, class, a concentrated suspension would be a, um, a suspension having a concentration of 5 grams per 100 ml. So, 5, uh, yeah, 5 grams per 100 ml. Okay? Pag yan naman ay dilute, usually it's less than 2 grams per 100 ml. Now, the process at which class um, uh, 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 suspension settles in a flocculated system Okay, it's called subsidence. Ito yung term na ginagamit natin. So, subsidence, that's the settling of our particles in a flocculated system. Now, let's talk about class Stokes Law. Ano yung mga parameters na kailangan natin i-consider um, for Stokes Law? Okay, obviously, class 1 would be the particle size. Remember, class I mentioned yesterday, right? Colloids are of smaller particles. Kaya ang tendency is lumulutang sila. So, coarse dispersion is of a much larger size Though hindi siya uniform, ha, pero generally class, okay, the larger the larger the size, mas mabilis mag-settle. So definitely, particle size class plays a vital role here. Okay? So another thing class na kailangan natin consider would be the density of the dispersed space and the dispersed media. Or the internal, internal, where's the external phase? Okay, for suspensions. And then class G here, so ito yung sa... Um, Ito yung sa internal phase. Ito yung sa external. Okay. Ang G naman here, class, would be acceleration due to gravity. So, obviously, particles are, these particles are still obeying the laws of gravity. So, gravity is pulling it downwards pa rin. Right? And then, class, lastly, would be viscosity. Uh, Pag-uusapan natin ito, class, sa rheology. Okay? Pero basically, class, viscosity refers to the, ano, to the uh, to a fluid's property to resist flow. Okay, so the more viscous, mas mahirap siyang i-pour. Okay, the less viscous, mas mabilis ma-pour. Okay, parang tubig, di ba? Tubig, very less vis it's less viscous. Compared up to honey, okay, or pull-up. Right? Now, class, ang unit kasi ng viscosity is in poa. Right? That's called poa. Okay, so just so you know lang, class, ang poa kasi natin in terms of CGS, Okay, this one is um, dime second per centimeter squared. Squared. Okay? A pua is dime second per centimeter squared. Okay? At alam naman natin, class, yung dime, in terms of C, dime, okay, in terms of CGS, that would be gram centimeter per second squared. Okay? Okay. So that's for that. So, yun yung CG, CGS system ng kanyang uh, units. Right? Okay. So, let's have your class a sample problem. Right? So, here class, a powder has a density of 1.3 gram per mm and average particle diameter of 2.5 micrometers. Now, assuming the particles to be, uh, uh, assuming that the particles are spherical. Okay? According to the Stokes equation, this powder will settle, settle in water whose viscosity is 1 centipoise, okay, assume lang yun na 1 centipoise, okay, at this rate. So, what will be um, the rate of sedimentation niya? So, class, using again the formula of Stokes Law, okay, so yung velocity niya would be diameter squared, okay, so density ng inyong internal, 
minus density ng external phase times gravity over 18 times ano nga ba yung, ano nga ba yung mature na ano? <laughs> ng viscosity natin. Multiply to the viscosity. Okay? So, now classes first right are given. Alright, so given that in class we have here density of the internal phase, which is 1.3 grams per ml. Okay? Ano ka sa density na external phase natin? Since it's water, ano ba ang density ng water natin? We always assume it to be 1 gram one, per ml. Yun, very good. 1 gram per ml, or sometimes class we assume this at 1 gram per, one gram per ml at 4 degrees Celsius. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, then ano naman yung diameter niya? Ang diameter daw is 2.5 micrometers. Na class, look at the formula here. Iba sabi natin class, it's always expressed in, yan yun, lahat ng units natin is in CGS, in centimeters. So obviously class, I need to convert 2.5 micrometers to centimeters. Okay, and if I convert that class, gina mapakita kong paano ha, pero that should be 0 0.12325 centimeters. Okay? So, yun yung diameter niya. Now, uh, what else do I have here? Ah, ang kanyang viscosity. Ang kanyang viscosity class is 1 centipua. Right? E, tandaan natin class, ang hanggat maaari, we want to keep the unit of the viscosity be at pua. Okay? Pua lang. Kasi class 1 centipua is equivalent to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, sorry, 0, 1, pua. Okay? So, let's keep it at that. Right? So, I think pwede na tayong mag-substitute. Okay. So, ang ating diameter is simply 0 0.00025 centimeter. Square mo lang yan. Okay? Multiplied to 1.3 gram per ml minus 1 gram per ml times, ano ang G pala natin? Sorry. So that should be 980 centimeter per second squared. Okay, that's the acceleration due to gravity. 9.8 meters per second squared or 980 centimeters per second squared. Okay, so 980 centimeter per second squared. Okay, and then 18 times 0 0.014. Okay. Now class, uh, kayo nang bahala dito mag-ano? Compute? Okay, pero basically, ang kalalabasan nito would be 1.8375 times 10 to the negative 5 over 0 0.18. And you get 0 0.123102 centimeters per second. Okay, and that would be the velocity at which our um our particles will be settling down okay, which is a good thing technically class okay, kasi mabagal siya mag settle down okay so are we good now class tandaan niyo lang basta gamitin niyo yung mga units na ito always ang lalabas diyan is centimeter per second centimeter per second okay so let's not make it any more technical basta siguro din niyo lang na pare pareho ang units na gamit natin gagamit ng CGS TGS yung units natin. So, ang kalalabasan niyang class would be centimeter per second. Okay, docs? Okay. Now, another sedimentation parameter class na pwede natin gamitin, okay, would be the sedimentation volume. So, it simply talks about class the ratio of the equivalent volume of sediments to the total volume of the suspension. So, maday lang naman pa class eh. Okay? Ang sedimentation volume simply talks about how much volume ang na-occupy ng sediments okay, as compared to the total volume of the suspension. Okay? So, class, ano natin, di ba? After a while, if this is a um, suspension, okay, di ba? Kasi after a while, magsasettle down siya dito. Okay, sa bottom. Now, class, to compute for your VU, VU talks about class D, ano, um, tawag dito? Uh, D, ano, D, the volume of your sediment, sorry. Okay, that's the volume of the sediments being occupied. Okay, how much of the sediments, okay, how much of the sediments will settle after a while? So, ano yung volume niya? So, kunwari, kung ito ay 2 ml, edi 2 ml yun. Alright? Tapos kasi ang VO, 
DOD ta would be the original volume of the suspension, which is assuming kunwari 10 ml. Okay? So simply kasi ang gagawin mo lang dyan, 2 divided by 10. And then you get now class your sedimentation volume. Right? So kung yan ay, so hindi ko alam, hindi ko pa alam kung ano 2 divided by 10, then 0 0.2. Duh. So it's simply 0 0.2. Okay? Now, the ideal value class of your sedimentation volume should be 1. Okay? It's usually 1. But of course, it can be less than 1. In this case class, it's less than 1. Yung ating sedimentation volume. Alright? Now, ano bang ini-indicate class ng value ng F? Okay? If it's, uh, if F is, ano, uh, less than 1, alright? Meaning, ah, uh, tawag ito, the volume of um, sediment is less than the total volume of the solution. Okay, pero if it's equal to one class, then the system, okay lang din yun. It simply indicates class that the system is in a flocculated equilibrium. Okay, it's in, it's in a flocculated equilibrium. Sorry, clear? So again, class, ideally, as much as possible, we want our F value to be either equal to one or less than one. So okay lang naman yun, walang problema. Okay, at least, ibig sabihin lang kasi, ang system ko is in a flocculated state. Okay? My suspension is in a flocculated system, which is good. Okay? It's good. Now, what happens, class, if the F value is greater than 1? Okay? Ibig sabihin, class, mas pabakas ang volume ng suspensoids, aso ng internal phase natin, kesa sa, kesa sa buong solution. So, sediment volume is greater than that of the original volume due to a network of flocks formed in the suspension. And so, loose and floppy sediments start to, okay, to form. So, class, kapag greater than 1 na yan, Right? We don't want that to happen. Kasi ito yung mga suspension that are at a high risk for creating cakes. Okay? Mas high ang risk nila mag-create ng cakes. Okay? Are we good? Alright. So ideally class, again, we either want it to be equal to 1 or less than 1. Ang ating uh, sedimentation volume. Okay? Ay, ba't nalagyan ng animation to? Alright, so... In terms of degree of flocculation naman class, it simply relates the sedimentation volume of the flocculated suspension okay, to the sedimentation volume when it's deflocculated. Okay, when the suspension starts to exist in its deflocculated state. Okay, so tignan naman na class how, how flocculated, how, ano, how much yung, ano, yung degree of flocculation ng inyong suspension. Okay, kasi take note class, ha, ideally we want to keep it in a flocculated system. Alright? Pero ang tendency is, nagiging deflocculated din naman siya sooner or later. Alright? So, ang gagawin lang natin dyan class would simply be the, um, divide the sedimentation volume of the suspension while it's in its flo flocculated state, okay, flocculated system, divided by its um, sedimentation volume kapag siya ay nasa deflocculated state na. Alright? So, it's simply, yun lang yun. Alright? So, we'll just simply apply the formula here. Okay, to compute for uh, the sedimentation volume kung nasa flocculate, um, sa, uh, nasa flocculated system okay, versus a deflocculated system. Okay? Okay. Now, siyempre sabi natin, di ba, as much as possible, we want to keep the suspension in, its flocculate, in a flocculated system. So, what are the things that I can give, I can add to my, ano, I can add to my suspension to keep it in a flocculated state. So there are three things na pwede natin gawin class. Pwede tayong magdagdag ng electrolytes, surfactants, or polymers. Okay? Now, electrolytes kasi class, again, it's similar to how, um, kung bakit ang ginagamit nating dispersion, ano, dispersion medium, kaysa isang colloid, should have an opposing charge to the dispersion phase. Okay? Para kasi yung dispersion phase, ang affinity niya is towards the medium, dispersion medium, not to each other. Okay? Similar to this class. Kung halimbawa, alam ko ang aking, um, ito, ang particles ko, ang suspend, ang aking internal phase is negatively charged. Okay? So, obviously, class, I'll add an electrolyte that has a positive charge. Now, bakit? Para ang aking mga suspensoids or aking mga, ang aking internal phase, hindi sila magdikit-dikit sa isa't isa. Ang hahanapin nila ay yung electrolyte na pwede nilang pagdikitan, which, which contains an opposite charge. Does that make sense? Okay. So, para na ito kasi, ba? sabi natin, ang ating internal phase class, kunwari negatively charged. Okay? It's a negatively charged internal phase. Yung ating um, suspensoids. Okay? 
So class, iba sabi natin, may tendency pa rin sila magdikit-dikit, creating Van der Waals forces. Though technically, they have repulsive forces, pero sometimes class, that repulsive force is very weak. Okay, mahina yung repulsive forces. So they tend to create flocks or they tend to create aggregates. Okay, now, nagyan ko dito kunwari class ng isang electrolyte which is positively charged. Magdidikit pa ba sila sa isa't isa? Obviously, hindi na. Didikit sila sa electrolyte that has in the uh, has an opposing charge. Okay? So, health class preventing them from aggregating uh, to one another. Right? So, ayan siya. So, as, uh, act as flocculating agents by reducing the electric barrier between the particles by decreasing their zeta potential resulting to a loosely arranged structure. So, hindi sila agad-agad nagdidikit. That's just more basic potassium phosphate or aluminum chloride can be added as an electrolyte to prevent um, our suspensoids from creating flux. Okay? Or to control the flocculation. Next one class is surfactant. I have a separate topic for this. So basically class surfactants can either be ionic and non-ionic and they are used to bring about flocculation. Surfactants class are amphiphiles. You still remember an amphiphile? Ano nga bang amphiphile? Sige, Ms. Wihoto. Amphiphile po yung can either act as a basic or act as an acid. Yes, very good. Or in this case class, can act as a, an anion and a cation. Okay, kaya pwede siya maging positively charged or negatively charged. Okay, pwede siya zwitter ionic. Okay, zwitter ion. Right, so yun yung surfactants natin. Okay, sabi nga natin, di ba ito yung mga bisexual? Pwede sa babae, pwede sa lalaki. Okay? In the chemical world. Now, polymers on the other hand class is another material that we can use to control flocculation. Okay, and these are usually hydrophilic polymers that exhibit pseudoplastic property and promotes physical stability of suspensions. Now, class, when we say pseudoplastic, ito yung mga, actually, pag-usapan natin ito class sa, ano, sa rheology, okay, the different types of, ano, the different properties of fluids in, in terms of their flow properties. Kapag sila rin yung class pseudoplastic, ito yung malapot siya, okay, kapag standing, malapot siya. Pero pag inalog mo, okay, nagiging fluid siya. Right? Nagiging fluid yung consistency. Ano mga example nito? Actually, ang, well, ketchup kasi is pixotropic eh. Pero it follows on pseudoplastic, ano, pseudoplastic flow. Yun nga lang class, pixotropic, ibig sabihin, at standing, gel siya. Okay? Hindi na siya fluid technically, gel na siya. Pero pag inalog mo, nagiging fluid siya. Napasin nyo kalas ang ketchup. Okay, di ba ketchup, iwan mo lang ganyan, iwan mo siya. Di ba parang siyang gel? Parang gelatin siya. Pag pinokpok mo ganyan, di ba pag galima, ayaw lumabas, pinokpok mo lang ganyan, sa bote eh. Gusto mong simutin yung laman niya. Pinupukpuk po class, di ba na-notice yung class, nagiging mas fluid siya. Okay? Kasi kasi nga nag-add tayo ng, ng stress. We're adding stress to the structure within the ketchup. So class, upon applying of stress, nagiging liquid yung ketchup. Pero pag iniwan na yung class, mabalik yan sa kanyang gel-like structure. Okay? So, pseudoplastic naman class, pag sarang yung pseudoplastic, upon standing, halimbawa, iwan lang siya dyan, liquid pa rin siya, pero malapot siya. Pero pag inalog mo siya, Nagiging liquid siya. Right? Walang may, ano ba yung magandang example ng ano? Uh, na common na makikita sa bahay. Right? So, wala na ako maisip. Ang naisip ko lang talaga is ketchup. Pero kasi sexotropic na yung property niya. Eh. Okay? Pero pseudoplastic pa rin naman yung behavior niya. It's a pseudoplastic, kumbaga, it's a subcategory of a pseudoplastic liquid. Okay? Which is, a, it's sexotropic. Right? Pero anyway, class. So, mga... Mga polymers class, they tend to be pseudoplastic. Kaya nga, upon standing class, ibig sabihin, pag iniwan ko siya, malapot siya. And remember class, one of the prop, ang isa sa mga gusto nating gawin sa isang suspension is, mabagal siya mag-settle down, right? We want our suspensions to settle down slowly. So, if my, um, tawag dito, my suspension class, standing, ito ko nangari, ito yung suspension ko. Okay? Pag standing lang yan, kung ang kanyang disperse, ang kanyang external phase class is malapot, Ibig sabihin, mabagal na mag-settle down, correct? Tama ba? Okay, dahil malapot yung kanyang um, external phase, okay, yung suspensoids natin, hindi agad-agad babagsak. Okay? Which is good. Pero kapag pag inalog ko yan, dapat mag-pour ko naman siya, right? Dapat mag-pour ko siya. Which is a good property class of pseudoplastic, oh sorry, of polymers. Kasi yung mga polymers natin, kasi hydrophilic polymers like CMC, carboxylethyl cellulose, or methyl cellulose, Okay, ba't ko ba sinasabi yung sinasabi ko? Sulat natin. Isa naman, hindi namin makahabol yan. Hindi familiar. Yan. Okay, CMC or carb. 
boxy methyl cellulose. Okay? So these are polymers class na ginagamit natin para sa mga suspensions natin. Kasi nga class, it exhibits pseudoplastic property. Okay? Wherein, kapag pinabayaan mo siya, malapot siya. Pero pag inalog mo, lumalab now. Okay? Are we good? Ano po example ng ganun? Ah, uh, alam niyo yung sausawa ng fishball? Nag-fishball ba kayo? Opo. Ayun, okay. Nag-fishball. Alright, mabili ka ng fishball, right? Tingnan nyo, class, diba? Sa lalagyan niya lang, malapot siya. Alugin mo yung class or halu-haluin mo ganyan. Hindi kasi may cornstarch yun eh. Cornstarch uh, can actually, yun. Iba kapag lumalamig, nagiging gel siya. Pero pag alugin mo yung class, nagiging liquidy siya. Because it has um, pseudoplastic properties. Okay, but kung ba't discuss na to agad, eh, may separate topic tayo dito. Pero I just want you to understand, class, kaya siya ginagamit natin, okay, yung mga, yung mga polymers na to, okay, yung mga polymers na to, kasi ginagamit natin, kasi nga, upon standing, malapot siya. Okay, malapot siya. So, hindi agad-agad magsasettle yung, yung, ano natin, yung, yung suspensoids. Okay, pero pag inalog na, sinake na, so, liquid na siya ulit. So, pag dinagay sa, sa kutsarita, dahil ba, okay, to, kutsarita, nilagay mong ganyan, you get a liquid. Not a, not something that's too thick. Right? So, nag-gets ba, class? So, if you can appreciate this, kung bakit ganun yung mga formulations na ginagamit natin, or why do we use these kinds of chemicals versus others? Okay? So, it's really, ano? Kasi nga, again, it's one way to control flocculation. Okay? Parang bagay siya bumagsak. Kaya gumagamit rin ng polymer such as CMCs. Right? And they promote physical stability of suspensions because of their pseudoplastic property. Alright? So, uh, polymers class are, excuse me, long chain, high molecular weight compounds containing active groups based along their lens. So, part of the chain is adsorbed into the surface of the particles uh, with the remaining parts projecting out of, into the dispersion. So, the pseudoplast, they are usually pseudoplastic in nature. Okay? So, yun na nga ko kanina. So, such as hydrophilic polymer, gelatin, positive liposomes, again, CMCs, Right, so basically, the pseudoplastic fluids are those that undergoes shear thinning. Pag sinabi ka shear thinning, pag nag-agitate ka, naglagay ka ng force, luminipis yung liquid, nagiging less viscous. Okay? Nag-gets ba? Pag sinabi ko shear thinning, exhibit if I apply, ba, nag-apply ako ng shear stress, ginanong ko, okay, nagiging liquid na siya. Nagiging liquidy. Okay, so the viscosity of these fluids decrease as the shear rate increases. Okay, shear, kumbaga, um, basta pag, pag namin mo itong shear, technically, that's agitation. Right? Are we good? Okay. So, flocculation in a structured vehicle. So, the additional suspending agent is required uh, in this to, in this step to retard sedimentation. So, yun na nga sabi natin, di ba? Uh, one thing na ginagamit natin class to control the flocculation would be to use polymers such as CMC, uh, V-gum, tragacans, bentonite. These are inor itang bentonite is inorganic. This one is inorganic. So obviously class, I won't usually use this. Hindi, pwede ko gamitin ito for ano, bentonite magma. Sorry. As a radio-opaque radio ano, solution. Para sa mga pag-X-ray ng colon. Okay, so usually gumagamit ka ng bentonite magma. Okay, but anyway, um, yeah, so CMC, Carbapol, V-Gum, Tragacan, these are all um, natural polymers. All right, you can either use them alone or in combination. So, idea of suspending agents, again, sabi ko sa inyo, they should be pseudoplastic. Bakit? Kasi upon standing, malapot siya. So, hindi agad-agad magkasettle yung suspensoid. Pero pag inalog ko na, okay, nagiging tubig na siya ulit. Nagiging, nagiging less viscous. So, mas mabilis siya i-pour from its container. Again, a property of a desirable suspension is that it readily pours out of its container. Okay? So, combination of bentonite plus CMC produces an excellent suspending medium. Just so you know. Bentonite plus is inorganic. CMC is organic. Okay? Since this, mix, since this mixture of suspending agents, which is fixotropic as well as pseudoplastic, uh, proves to be useful in forms for it for, because it forms a gel on standing and becomes fluid when disturbed. Kaya di sasabi ko sa inyo kaya kaya na fixotropicity. Na fixotropic. Yung nagiging gel. Parang ka ba nga nung sa ano? Sa, 
Tapos sawsawan ng fishbowl. Okay? Pag masyadong marami ang nilagay na cornstarch. Okay? Pag lumalamig yun, nagiging gel siya. Nagiging sexotropic yung kanyang property. Alright? So are we good? Okay. So yun lang naman siya. Now, how do we stabilize um, dispersion? Okay? So particle size should be as small as possible. Okay? Uh, there should be high particulate concentrations. And avoidance of particle-particle interactions. As much as possible, class, uh, we don't want the particles to be interacting with each other. So you can either make them deflocculated, but again, we still prefer flocculated system over deflocculated. Manipulate their densities. Okay? Uh, make sure that the particles have similar charges or increase the viscosity of the dispersion medium. Now, of course, of, of all these three, the pinakamadasaginagamit natin way to uh, stabilize the dispersion would be to increase the viscosity of your dispersion medium. But again, we prefer to have pseudoplastic uh, dispersion mediums. Dispersion mediums that have pseudoplastic properties. So, may mga viscosity enhancers natin. Again, natural gums like Acacia, Tragacans. Hindi sabi class, dapat magawa niyo ito sa dosage form. Okay, so gagawa kayo ng suspension doon. So, usually, ang ginagawa ng suspending agents would be Acacia. Yung mismo kasi, Acacia, yung ang galing sa Acacia tree. Yung sap ng Acacia tree, ginagamit natin as natural gum and we use it as a um, suspending agent. So, pwede rin CMC, natal cellulose, clay, such as vegum, bentonite, and so on and so forth. Ah, ito nga pala. Diba ka sa mention ko kanina? Okay? Ang solutions, diba, uh, um, once, once you add water class, it becomes more prone to bacterial growth, right? Especially kung may carbohydrate. Now, ang question ko dyan is, class, bakit ang mga syrups matagal ang shelf life? Mga syrups like tempra, ano uh, mga paracetamol syrup, uh, vitamins, vitamin C na syrup. Na class, sabi niya, sir, di ba may sugar yun? Di ba syrup may sugar? Correct? Technically, uh, syrups have sugar, right? It also contains water. So the perfect combination for bacterial growth, right? Pero ba't ganun? Bakit ang mga syrups natin like vitamin syrups or yung paracetamol syrup, ba't hindi sila nagkakaroon ng bacterial growth? Okay? May idea ba kayo, class, kung bakit? Okay. Sige, okay lang yan. Let me explain. Alright? So, allow me to explain, class. Ang syrups kasi natin, class, may required concentration yan for um, for glucose. Kasi sticky, um, not necessarily. Okay? Not necessarily. Kasi, class, ang syrups, ang kinagandaan kasi nila, class, may requirement to na concentration. Eh. It should be 85% sucrose. 85%. Isa yung doon siya concentrated. Ano ba klasa ang nangyayari kapag ang syrup mo contains 85% sugar, it becomes antibacterial. Okay? Bakit? Sir, paano nangyayari yun? Kasi klasa 85% concentration, ang nangyayari klas, yung syrup mo, dahil sobrang concentrated niya, once na maragyan niya ng bacteria, yung bacteria klas na uubusan ng tubig through osmosis. Okay? Bakit, sir? Di ba klas, naalala nyo, ito kung yung bacteria. Okay, kunwari class, meron siyang 2% concentration of sugar, glucose, sa loob niya. E nasa labas niya, class, is 85%. So, it's very concentrated, right? Sa so, tingin niyo, saan pupunta ang water? Papasok ba kay, you know? Yun, very good. Nagkakaroon ng cell lysis. Very good. Ang tubig ngayon, class, ng bacteria, lalabas dito. Ang nangyayari ngayon sa bacteria, kung nagsishrink. Okay? Nagsishrink siya, namamatay. So, hence class, bacteria cannot grow at concentrations of, ano, at a glucose concentration, sorry, a sucrose concentration of 85% and above. Make sense? Alright. Actually, sa, may dosage form na ba kayo ngayon? Or, tama nga ba? May dosage form na kayo, right? Okay. Pharmaceutical dosage form? Ayun. Okay, so one thing class na i-discuss ay ito once you start talking about syrups. Okay, bakit hindi tinutubuan ng bacteria ang mga syrups? Sa class, you meet the 85% required. Kaya nalala ko dati, pag gumagawa kami ng syrups, ang dami namin sugar talaga na kailangan buuin bago, ano, um, sabi namin siya ma-create. Ma 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 so, usually, mag-away kami ng 85 grams of um, white sugar as put it in 100 ml of water. Alam niyo ba kung gano'ng kahirap tunawin yun? It's very difficult class. Kaya you have to always apply heat. Kaya kailangan siya painitan sabang yung minimix yung ganyan. Sobrang lapot niya. Okay, then you can form a syrup. Alright, now this time class, let's talk about emotions. 
Okay? Mas mahaba-haba kasi ito. An emotion class is basically a heterogeneous system, again, that consists naman this time, kung suspension kayo na may insoluble solids ako, this one class, an emotion, at least one immiscible liquid. So, hence class, ano ang usual na combination ng emotion? Anong klaseng liquid to? It's the combination of an oil and a water. Two immiscible liquids. Okay? So, di ba, sabi nga, uh, nakanta ko na ata to eh. Di ba, tubig at langis. Pag pinagharo, hindi pa rin tatamis. So, class, in reality, kaya natin, ano yan, kaya natin sa paghaluin with the use of an surfactant or an emulsifying agent. Alright? So, the droplet diameter, take note, class, ha, we're talking about droplet size here. Okay? Hindi tayo nagtotalk about the particle size. Kasi what we're forming here, class, are globules. Or droplets. Okay? Na-try nyo na bang ishake ang mantika sa katubig? Okay? Alam mo, lagay, try nyo sa isang test tube or sa isang, ano, lalagyan. Lagyan mo tubig, lagyan mo ng mantika. Di ba lulutang ang mantika? Pag inalog-alog mo siyang ganyan, class, makikita mo, it, it starts to form globules. Okay? Those globules, class, pag mas maliit pa dyan, they are called droplets. Okay? So globules are bigger, droplets are smaller. Okay, and the droplet size class should be at least, uh, uh, usually exceeds 0.1 micrometers. Now, sabi nga natin, hindi natin kaya ipagsama ang langis at tubig. Not unless we add a third component. Okay, my third agent again, which is an emulsifying agent. An emulsifying agent class is again an amplifier. Okay, amplifier siya. Meaning, it's both water-soluble and lipid-soluble at the same time. Okay, so kaya pas pag, pag nilagyan ko ng emulsifying agent, ang isang, ang tubig at langis, okay, ang tendency ngayon class is pwede ko silang ipagsama. Okay, pwede silang ngayon mag-mix together. Because the emulsifying agent has both water-soluble and lipid-soluble properties. Okay, so yun na pagsasama ko siya. Now this agent prevents the coalescence. Okay, iniiwasan niya na mag-separate or mag-coalesce yung ating emotion and maintains the integrity of the individual droplets. Right? Kung baga, it we, the emulsifying agent class um, keeps emotions homogenous. Okay? Homogenous. So, sabi natin class, as much as possible, pharmaceutically class, we want our preparations to be homogenous. Para equal ang dosing, at the same time, it's aesthetically pleasing tingnan. Okay, the problem you have with emotions is that they are thermodynamically unstable system. What do I mean when I say thermodynamically unstable? Pag ang emotion class nilagay mo sa initan, maghihiwalay ang tubig at langis niya. Alright? So, they, ano, ang kanilang structure technically breaks. Okay, the structure that exists that keeps the system homogenous starts to break. Sorry, clear? Okay. So, pwedeng excessive na lamig or excessive na init. Na try na class ilagay sa freezer ang mayonnaise. The mayonnaise is a good example of ano eh. Okay. Try nyo lagay na class. Tingnan nyo. Okay. Naghihiwalay ang tubig at saka yung ano, yung langis ng mayonnaise. Kasi nagsosolidify yung ano niya eh, yung, yung langis, yung oil. Tapos maghihiwalay siya sa tubig. Okay. That makes it unstable. It's thermodynamically unstable. So again, class, emotions are very um, affected by temperature changes. Okay, so there are two types of emotions. Kaya na meron three types for suspensions. May oral, topical, and then um, parenteral. For emotions class, dalawa naman ang uri niyan eh. Either oil in water or water in oil. So ano mo pinagkaiba niyan? Okay, mabisa rin kas maalala. Pag oil in water, ang internal phase ko is oil. Internal yan. Ang external phase ko is water. So kung maga ang solute ko is an oil, Ang solvent ko is a water. Now, another, ang, ang iba naman class, we have naman, water ang internal phase, while oil, yung kanya external phase. Now, between the two class, sino sa tingin nyo sa dalawa ang malagkit? Okay? Is it oil in water or water in oil? Sino sa dalawa ang mas malagkit? Sa tingin nyo? Malagkit pag pinahid ko sa balak. Okay, very good, Ms. Sabines. Correct, it's water in oil. Yan, very good, Ms. Pohoto and Mr. Reyes. Water in oil class. Kasi majority ng emotion na to is made up of oil. So, pag pinahit mo yan, class, it leaves a film. Kaya nga, class, if you're trying to
to look for an, emo- an emotion, kaya halimbawa gagawa ka ng, ano, ng ointment. Okay, ointment class are water and oil type of emotion. Okay, water and oil. Bakit? Kasi it leaves a film. It leaves a film. Or di kaya class, uh, ano mga magandang example? Yung pag sa araw, ano nga ba tayo ito? Uh, sun, uh, what is it? Sun pan, uh, sun lotion? Sun sunscreen, yun. Yun, sunblock, sunblock. Thank you very much. Sunscreen, tayo nga. Okay, so sunscreen class, it's a um, water and oil type. Okay, alam niyo ba kung bakit? Kasi class, kailangan mo mag-leave ng layer dyan to protect your skin from the sun. Okay? You need to put something here. Mag-leave. Kasi pag oil, pag oil class ang basis, ang kanyang external face, it creates a, a thin layer. So it helps protect your skin from sunlight. Right? Make sense? Okay. So what about, ano yung mga examples sir, ng oil in water? Ano ba, face creams? Mga face creams? Okay, may, kaya ba ay may mga facial routines? May skin care routines? Ayan, to keep your skin moist and, ano, poreless? Ngayon, mga facial creams class, that's a water, an oil in water type. Kasi isipin nyo na lang class, kasi kailangan mo i-hydrate yung skin ng balat mo eh. To make it, uh, ano ba? Um, plump? Hydrated? Para moist? Okay? So usually class, ginagawa nila dyan na type of emotion would be an oil in water type. Okay? Para class, um, hindi siya malagkit sa balat. Malag- Alam mo lang talaga yung balat mo. Okay? So yun yung advantage kapag oil in water naman siya. Now class, in terms of um, pharmaceutical preparation, halimbawa, yung iniinom, yung ginagamit natin sa, pa, ano, sa uh, as a medicine, majority class will be oil in water. Kasi gusto natin class mas ma-absorb yung ating gamot. Okay? So medicinal emotions usually for oral administrations are in oil in water type. Okay? So they usually require uh, the use of an oil in water emulsifier. So non-ionic surfactants, acacia tragacant or gelatin can be used as an emulsifying agent. So class, isipin nyo, ah. If you remember a while ago, class, ginagamit din natin itong mga suspending agents. As suspending agents. And they can also be used as um, uh, emulsifiers. Okay? But to be more precise, they can be used as an oil in water type of emulsifier. Alright? Now, what about for water and oil? Normally, class, these are for externally applied emotions like, uh, excuse me, sunscreen. Okay? So certain foods such as mayonnaise and butter are oil, water and oil type. Okay? Pero we don't use naman that for pharmaceutical prep, ano, pharmaceutical reasons. Butter and apple is also an emotion. Just so you know. It's a combination of um, oil and uh, milk. Okay? That's butter. So emulsifiers kasi ginagamit natin dyan would be um, yung mga soaps like uh, calcium palmitate, sorbitans, cholesterol, or wool fat. So they can be used as um, emulsifiers for this. Pero again, class, uh, medically speaking, kung iinumin natin yung ano, emulsion, we prefer to be an oil and water type. Isipin nyo, class, kung water and oil type yung emulsion mo, tapos iinumin mo. Para kang uminom ng, is, ng, ano, ng mantika. Okay? Of course, that's very un, ano, unpleasing. Right? Hindi siya masara, hindi siya ano, hindi siya tatangkilikin ng publiko. Kaya ang class, karamihan ng emotions for ingestion would be an oil and water type. Right? Like Scott's emotions. Alam niyo ba yun? Scott's emotions. Yung gawa sa cod liver oil. Uh, okay. Alright. It's a good source class of vitamins A and D. Vitamin A and D ba? A and E. Okay, basta. It's a good source of vitamin A and D, I think. Okay. Now, since we now know class that there are two types of emotions, how will I know kung what type of emotion yung ano, uh, yung meron ako? So yung mga tests na ginagawa ko, so there are basically three tests. We have disolubility test, dilution test, and then electric conductivity test. Madali lang mga tumalala kasi, ha? pag oil in water, ang kanyang external phase is water. Pag water in oil, ang kanyang external phase ay oil. Correct? Okay. So, class, kung gagamit ako ng dye, such as methylene blue or brilliant blue, technically, dapat ginagawa niyo ito sa lab, pero tingnan niyo yung ginagawa natin, dinidiscuss ko na lang. Okay? You're supposed to do this in the lab. We have an experiment for this. But anyway, so, class, ano naman ang ginagawa sa dye solubility test? Normally, class, ang dye, natutunaw saan? Sa tubig ba o sa mantika? Definitely, too big. Okay? So, ang dyes, class, like methylene blue or brilliant blue, Okay, natutunaw siya sa tubig. So, kung ang aking emotion is an oil in water type, since majority ng kanyang, ang kanyang external phase is water, ano ang magiging itsura ng dye pag binadbud kong ganun? Pag binadbud ko yung class, takalat yung dye. 
Okay, mabilis ka kalat. So the dye, if the dye dissolves and is um, and it uniformly diffuses, then I know class that's an oil and water type. Pero kasi if the pa, if the dyes do not ano dis, di siya na disperse, okay? At nagdump lang siya sa isang lugar, then that means it's a water and oil type emulsion. Make sense? All right. Okay. Now for dilution test naman class, o madali lang naman yan. Okay, if it freely mixes with water, ang gabi naman siya class, emulsion, nagyan mo ng tubig. Pag inalog mong ganun, okay, tapos biglang parang nag-disperse siya ng maayos, okay, walang problema, then I know it's an oil and water type. Okay? Pero class, pag dilagyan mo ng tubig, tapos hindi siya nag-mix, hindi siya nag-mix. So, I'll definitely class, I can assume that it's a water and oil type of emulsion. Make sense naman, right? Okay. Then, pag electric conductivity, obviously, pag nag-conduct ng electricity, that's a oil and water type. Okay? Ibig sabihin, majority kasi tubig eh. So, nakapag-conduct siya ng kuryente. Pero pag hindi nag-conduct ng kuryente, then most likely, my emulsion is a water and oil type. Right? Okay, so what are some of the pharmaceutical applications of our emulsions? So, oil and water usually are used conveniently for administration of oil-soluble vitamins, like Scott's emulsion, or cod liver oil. Okay. Naka nakakita na ba ang cod liver oil, class? Ano po ang binabenta nito sa butika? Yes, ang baho nito. Okay, it's very, ano, class? Kung, na kung naamoy nyo na class ang patis, na sabaho pa yun sa patis. Okay, batis na pa, ang patis na nabubulok. Right? Kaya nga class, normally, you always have to add flavorants for cod liver oil. I forgot nga ba flavor ginagamit yun to mask it sa na. No way, pag-aaralan nyo yun sa dosage form. Okay, ano yung mga ideal um, flavorants for various preparations. Kaya kalimbawa, tayo nga natin kung na-discuss. Na-discuss na ba yung mga flavorants? The types of flavorants na ginagamit for ano, various dosage forms. For, for uh, syrups, ganyan-ganyan. How do we mask taste? Halimbawa class, Pag alam mo bitter yung gamot mo, anong ideal flavor na idagdag para ma-mask yung bitterness niya? May idea ba kaya? Okay, so I guess, no, we don't put sweet. Kasi class, mag-highlight yung bitterness ng ano. No, we don't use orange flavor class. We use, pag orange class, usually, um, pag sour yung flavor ng ano mo, medication. Like, ano, vitamin C. Kaya tingnan nyo, nakakita na ba kayo ng vitamin C na flavored chocolate? Vitamin C preparation, yung mga syrups, wala. Nakikita mo dyan class, orange, raspberry, apple, okay, ano ba mga flavor na masarap na, ano? Kasi mga asin mga vitamin C. So normally class, pag sour ang inyong medication, we put citrus flavors. Mga citrusy. Okay, raspberry, citrusy. Pag mapait class, normally, it's chocolate flavor. Okay, kaya tingnan nyo, amoxicillin. Ano ang flavor ng amoxicillin? Hindi ba kayo nakatry? Suspension ng amoxicillin? Napaka-pahit kasi class ng ano, penicillium notatum. Yung pinanggalingan ni ano, amoxicillin. Alam niyo naman siguro class, di ba fungus ang ano? Alright, yan. Pinanggalingan ng penicillin natin. So class, mapait siya. Mapait yung flavor, yung lasa ng amoxicillin. So that's why we add chocolate flavor. Pwede chocolate or vanilla. Okay, to mask the bitter taste. Para niyo siya nang mapansin. Kasi technically, mapait naman talaga ang chocolate, right? Okay, so may kapaitan talaga yan. So mga ganun. Alright? Pag salty, ano nga bang ina-add? Sweet. Alam ko, sweet ang ina-add eh. Mas matamis. Okay, you add something that's sweet. Or salty flavored um, medication. Right? So, yung mga yun. Huwag kayo mag-aaral. Pag-aaralan nyo yun sa ano, dosage form. Okay? Tapos bigla sa sabihin ng dosage form. Pag-aaralan nyo sa physical pharmacy. Patay tayo dyan. <laughs> Nagpalita dyan. Nagano lang kami. Nagturuan lang pala kami. Huwag <laughs> naman sana. Pero kaya tutunan ko yun sa ano eh. Sa dosage form noon. Right, so anyway, sorry, nag-commercial break lang tayo. Okay, so what else? Um, pharmaceutical applications of emotions, intravenous emotions, are indicated for patients who are unable to assimilate materials administered orally. Technically, class, we use um, emotions for TPN. Familiar ba kayo sa TPN? Are you familiar with TPN? Uh, hindi. It's called the total parenteral Solution. It's a total parental uh, solution. Ano ba solution? Nutrition. Sorry. TPS yan. Nutrition. So meaning class, a TPN contains all three basic food groups. It contains proteins. It contains carbohydrates. 
And of course, it contains fats. Okay, see in your three basic food groups, right? Binibigay ka sa TPN sa mga taong hindi makakain. Or take for example, inoperahan yung bituka. Okay? Siyempre, inoperahan yung bituka mo, alam nga naman kumain ka pagkatapos mong operahan, right? Kailangan pagalingin mo muna yung sugat na uh, na, na inflict sa yung bituka. So, hindi ka makakain yung NPO ka. So, paano kukukunin ngayon yung nutrition na kailangan ko? Hindi naman po yung dextrose lang, carbohydrates lang yun. Tama? So, you need to get class TPN, which is a total parental nutrition, but it's proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Yung fast ko class, makukuha ko in a form of an oil in water emulsion. Make sense? Kasi class, kung fast lang yan ang ilalagay ko sa TPN, alimbawa, sa swear mo, lalagyan ko ng fat, lalagyan ko ng mantika, patingin nyo maghahalo yun? Hindi. Yan maghahalo. So, kailangan ko na emulsify yung agent. Kailangan siya ay existing in emotion form. Okay? Para ma-absorb sa katawan mo. Okay, what else? Radiopic emotions, use for diagnosis, cosmetic lotions, and creams. Ito yung sinabi sinyo. Uh, karamihan class, it's um, water and oil for lotions. And then emulsification is used for rapid formations of foam. Can be used for, uh, for rapid formation of foam. Okay? Now, some theories regarding emul emulsification class would be tatlo lang naman. Okay? Kumbaga, how, does emul how do emulsifiers work? Okay? So, ang, ang tatlong theory dyan class is surface tension theory, oriented wedge theory, or plastic or interfacial, interfacial film theory. Okay? So, let's discuss this one by one. For cinematic class, surface tension theory, ang ginagawa daw dito is an emulsifying agent serves as a surfactant. Ano ba ginagawa ng surfactant? It lowers the interfacial tension between two immiscible liquids. Parang ganito yan, class. Kung ito, kunwari isang basong tubig. Okay? Lagi, ito yung tubig. Tapos, andito kasi yung mantika. Pansinin niyo, class, yung gitna niya, may makapal na parang layer dito. Yung may kita ka parang may na-form na layer dyan. Okay? That's actually, class, the, ano, the interface between the water and the oil. Okay? And that is creating, class, tension. Tension. Ibig sabihin, nag nagre repel sila with each other. Okay? Nire-repel nila each other. Kaya hindi sila maghalo-halo. Now, ang ginagawa class ng surfactants natin or ng emulsifying agents is tinatanggal niya to or pinapanipis niya to. Tininipisan niya yung tension na yan that exists between the oil and water. So na class, pag numipis na yan, ang tendency is may capacity na sila ngayon kumalo. Ngayon yan ba, class? Nagas ba? So binabataan natin yung force that exists, the repulsive force between the oil and water. That force class is known as the surface tension. Are we clear? So, yung surface tension. So, the force that exists between the two surfaces. May tension, kumbaga. Alright? So, yun. So, ang ginagawa dyan is, iniiwasan yun, binabawasan, para mag-mix, mix, mix sila. Next one class is oriented wedge theory. So, this theory assumes monomolecular layers of emulsifying agents curve around a droplet of the internal space. So, technically, class of oriented wedge, actually, almost similar sa sa interfacial film theory. Kung ito yung droplet, binabalutan ng emulsifying agent yung bawat droplet. Okay, para kapag class nung sa micelle, remember micelles yesterday? Micelles is a colloid which allows the solubilization of oil to water, correct? So, technically, class, micelles can serve as emulsifying agents. And what they do, class, is they coat the oil droplets. Kinocoat nila. Kasi di ba yung hydrophilic heads nasa labas? Hydrophobic tails are on the outside. Are on the inside, sorry, are on the inside. And lastly, class, we have the plastic interfacial film theory. Yun na, the theory places the emulsifying agent at the interface between oil and water. Okay, surrounding the droplets of the internal face as a thin layer of film absorbed on the surface of the drops. Basically, parang kinukot ko lang yung ano, internal face. That's something that will allow it to uh, dissolve in water. Make sense? Okay. So, kumbaga kung ito yung, ito limbawa yung emulsifying agent, yung outer portion ng class is water soluble. Okay? Tapos inside, andito yung oil. Oil droplet ko. Okay? The oil droplet is inside the emulsifying agent. Okay? Dahil water soluble yung labas, okay, and then nakakapaghalo siya sa water. Okay? It's able to mix in water. So now, class, we're, we're done with the theories regarding emulsifications or our um, emulsifying agents. So, paano ba, ano ba yung mga theories behind? Okay, or how they work? So, let's talk about class, our emulsifying agents now. So, first off, class, we have the surface-active agents. 
we have the hydrophilic colloids, and then the finely divided particles. So, for sure, the surface active agents, ito yung uh, mga agents, type of agents that absorb at oil water interfaces to form monomolecular films and reduce the interfacial tension. So, again, class, as I mentioned a while ago, yung interfacial tension yun prevents water and um, the liquid and what? Water and the oil from interpenetrating each other. So, well, there's a constant force that's driving them to separate. Right? So, by reducing that force class, such as with the use of a surface active agent, we allow them to combine with each other. Okay, now, for hydrophilic colloids, man, they form a multi-molecular film around the dispersed droplets of oil in an oil and water emulsion. And then lastly, for finely divided solid particles, they adsorb at the interface between the two immiscible liquid bases. So basically, class, ano ba ang ginagawa ng emulsifying agent? Ang ginagawa niya naman, class, is it binds to both the water, the oil and the water, allowing it to, allowing them to uh, reduce the interfacial tension and at the same time, making them mix together. Okay? So kung ba, class, kung ito si emulsifying agent, right, may dalawang sides siya. Okay? Yung isa is oil-soluble at yung isa naman is water soluble. So obviously class, lahat ng oil didikit dito, lahat ng water soluble parts dito naman didikit, lahat ng water particles. So then class, because of this emulsifying agent, right, binabuwasan yung interfacial tension between the two liquids that allow them to mix together. Okay? Now, ano ba ang characteristic class ng isang physically stable emulsion? A while ago class, we discussed about the desirable um, qualities of a suspension. Now, this time, let's talk about an emulsion. So, an emulsion class that is physically stable, okay, said, is, said to, is, is said to be ano, um, free from coalescence, okay, both, uh, especially for the internal coalescence, absence of cleaning, and it maintains the elegance with respect to color, appearance, odor, and other physical properties. Now, ano ba ang usual na physical problems na na-experience natin uh, with emotions. So basically, class, there are four types of problem na madas natin makita sa isang emotion. Okay, pwede nagkaroon ng flocculation. Okay, it start, to, it start to flocculate. Started to cream. Nagkikreaming na yung emotion natin. Okay, nagkukuwales. Nagbe-break. Okay, miscellaneous physical and chemical changes such as um, color change, halimbawa. Okay, change in color or odor. Nung umpisa, mabango siya, tapos biglang parang napanis, napanis yung emotion natin. So that's a, that's a change in our emotion that is, of course, undesirable. Or pwede ka sa karoon ng face inversion. Okay? Now, ano ba na ng isa sa isa? Pag sinanari ka sa nag-coalesce yung emotion natin, di ba class dapat homogenous ang mixture? Homogenous yung mixture. What happens class in coalescence is, yung oil droplets, ang tendency is nadidikit-dikit sila. Okay? Then you can see, class, the globules within the emulsion itself. Okay? Another thing, class, would be flocculation. Well, na mention naman natin yung flocculation. Kung sa suspension, class, nagdikit-dikit yung mga ah, uh, suspensoids natin, nagdikit-dikit yung internal phase, tapos nag-settle down. In a emulsion, class, ano magdikit-dikit dito? Yung droplets, yung oil droplets natin. Okay, magdikit-dikit sila, they form globules, okay? And then, they, na may kita ngayon, nung, nagsiseparate na ngayon yung oil sa water. Okay, creaming on the other hand, class, yung oil droplets, okay, yung oil globules, right, normally, either mag-cream up or cream down yan eh. Cream upwards or cream downwards. Pag upwards, class, ang creaming yan, obviously, ito yung mangyayari. Nasa taas yung oil part. Okay, pero pag nasa ilalim naman yung oil, right, so obviously, nag-cream downwards yung, um, yung emotion natin. So that's called creaming. And of course, that's breaking, ito yung irreversible na, kung natin magagawa dyan, as in completely naghiwalay ang mantika sa tubig. Alright? So that's called breaking, as in nag-break na yung emotion. Literally, naghiwalay na yung oil sa water space. Okay. Creaming class is a reversible process. Right? So that's one thing that's, um, na pa natin, ano, it's a saving grace for uh, emotion. So it can happen, and please take note, it's a reversible process. So, pwede mag-cream up or cream down lang naman yan eh. So, upward creaming class is observed for oil and water types of emulsions, while downward creaming is observed for water and oil type. Okay, how do we prevent creaming class? Simply re-agitate the emulsion. Okay? 
i-reagitate mo lang. So, kumbaga, haluluin mo lang ulit siya para, ma- para may balik sa homogenous appearance yung emotion natin. Okay, pwede rin naman magdagdag ng viscosity improvers or thickening agents. Okay, homogenation, meaning kailangan i-mix mo lang ulit ng mabuting, ng maiging maigi. Or simply class, adjusting the external and internal face densities. Okay, you can change the densities. Pero again, class, for creaming, isa lang naman ang solution ng kadalasan dyan, just agitate. Okay, re-agitate the emotion. Now, for coalescence and breaking naman, class, this one is irreversible. So, once that happens, wala tayo magagawa. Okay, simple mixing fails to resuspend the globules since the film surrounding the particles has been destroyed and the oil tends to coalesce. Now, normally, class, a 50-50 phase volume ratio of oil and water forms a stable emotion. So, as much as possible, class, okay, you want a 50-50 amount of oil and water. Okay? So, what usually causes breaking? Well, Pwede yung non-uniform size of the solid particles kung gumagayot na tayo ng solid particles. Or a phase volume ratio of more than 74% of oil in oil and water emulsion. Okay? So, kung baga mas marami yung oil kesa sa water. So, tendency niya, ang nangyayari ngayon is, yun na, nagkakos siya ng breaking. Again, kasi as much as possible, we try to keep it at a 50-50 ratio. 50% oil, 50% water. Now, one way class to remedy this Okay, to prevent you from uh, having breakage or para mag-break yung ating emotion would be simply to use lecithin. It's a mixture of phospholipids having a negative charge at physiologic pH. Now, what about phase inversion? Ito na nakakatuwa klas eh. Halimbawa, unang ginawa mo is a water and oil type of emotion. Tapos bigla kas magiging oil and water naman siya. So nagkakas siya tinatawag na phase inversion. But normally class, ang phase inversion can be induced by shifting the emulsifier's affinity from one phase to the other. Take for example, class. Gagawa ka ng oil and water phase. Uh, uh, water and oil na lang. Emulsion. Okay, gagawa ka ng water and oil emulsion. Ang nangyari ngayon, class, obviously, you'll be using an emulsifying agent that is suitable for an oil and water emulsion, right? Okay, wherein, yung outer portion ng aking emulsifier is mostly oil. Alright? Tapos yung inner niya would be water. Okay, yung outer portion niya would be oil. Siya yung magkukot eh. Kukot niya yung water molecules. Now, class, if say for example, nag-add ako ng additional or may nangyaring ano, uh, nag-convert or nag-shift yung affinity ng aking emulsifying agent na instead na yung oil yung nasa labas, ang nangyari is, ito nagkaroon ng phase inversion. So, instead, class, na oil-soluble yung labas niya, bumaliktad siya. Okay, this time, naging water-soluble yung labasan niya at naging oil-soluble naman yung loob. Alright? Nagat maklas. Nagkaroon siya ng inversion, yung affinity ng ating emulsifier. So therefore, class, ang mangyayari is mag-invert din ngayon yung ating emulsion. So originally, halimbawa, water and oil siya, magiging oil and water siya ngayon. So halimbawa, class, if water and oil emulsion stabilized using sodium stearate, okay, it can be inverted to oil and water to, ah, sorry. This oil and water type by adding calcium chloride. Okay. Now, calcium chloride kasi class will start to form calcium stearate which will cause the emulsifier, okay, yung emulsifying agent natin, mag-invert siya from water in oil to oil in water type of emulsifying agent. Nagas ba class? Are we good? But natandaan nyo dito class, ha, ang, nag- ang nagkakaroon ng phase inversion talaga is the emulsifier. Again, di ba? For oil and water, may hiwalay tayo emulsifying agents para sa mga water and oil. Right? So, there's a difference between the two. Okay? Now, kapag nagkaroon class ng problem with the emulsifying agent, then it could cause phase inversion, which is, of course, a catastrophic uh, failure in the part of the compounding of emulsion. Okay? Normally, class, uh, alam ba sa physical pharmacy, when you make emulsions, we usually grade your emulsions based on its stability. Normally, at room temperature, iiwan yan. Kinabukas na titinan ulit. Pag hindi nagbago, alright, perfect ang score nyo. Okay, pero pag nagbago yan, nag-break, nag-coalesce, okay, may siyempre may reduction sa, ano, sa points yun. Worse, of course, would be breaking. Pag nag-break na kasi yung ano nyo, or nag-face inversion, ang inyong emotion, then that indicates na may mali talaga sa ginawa ninyo. Okay, may, gino- may maling ginawa sa process, or sa compounding process. Right? Now, let's talk about class, the interfacial phenomenon that exists between our substances. So, of course, very common ito class for both for suspension and emotion. Okay? Kasi kasi interpartial phenomenon can work for the different states of matter. 
Okay, then ba, ang interfacial tension between a solid and a gas or solid and liquid such as in suspension or liquid to liquid such as an emotion. Okay? So, kung ba, class, interfacial tension or interfacial phenomenon plays a vital role in both, uh, for our, ano, for our course dispersion, for our dosage force. Okay, so what is surface tension muna? So, surface tension class is the force per unit length that must be applied parallel to the surface so as to counterbalance the net inward pull. So, surface tension decreases with an increase in temperature. I think alam na naman to. And the unit is 9 per centimeter. What about interfacial tension? It's the force per unit length existing at the interface between two immiscible liquid phases. Okay, so reflects the extent of the intermolecular force of attraction and repulsion at the interface. Now, what is the surface tension as interfacial tension? Surface tension class is the property of a liquid in contact with a gas, normally, usually air. So, class, yung surface tension created in a, uh, in a water, say, for example. Diba yun ang reason kung bakit nakakalakad yung ano nga bang insect yun? Basta may mga insect nakakalakad sa, ano, sa, sa water because of the um, surface tension created by the water itself. Now, when we say interfacial tension class, that's, that, that's the force existing between two liquids. Okay? Between two liquids. Such as an oil and a water. Two immiscible liquids. Let me just, ano, um, stress that out. Okay? So, pwede two immiscible liquids or between any two substance. Such as, pwede rin naman solid at saka, okay, sorry, pwede solid to liquid. Okay? So they create still interfacial tension. And that's the tension class that we want to reduce when we're making emulsion, say for example, or suspension. Okay? So these are the various interfaces that can exist. So gas to liquid, gas solid, liquid liquid, and so on and so forth. Okay? So di ko na to. Now, what is the significance of these um, interfacial phenomena? So, absorption of drug into solid adjuncts in dosage form. Okay, so the reason why drugs are absorbed into solid adjuncts is because of the interfacial phenomenon that exists between the surfaces. Okay, or penetration of molecules from biologic membrane. Okay, let's say, for example, cell membrane. Okay, Siyempre, class, you need to understand the interfacial tension between the cell membrane and your drug molecule. Kung ang drug molecule ko is water soluble, obviously, may hirapan siyang mag penetrate sa lipid cell membrane. So you have to consider that interfacial, interfacial um, tension between the two substances. Okay? Or emotion formation and stability, and of course, dispersion of insoluble particles in liquid media for suspension. Kaya ako, as malaki ang role ng interfacial phenomenon, both for emotion and suspension. Okay? Kasi class, again, you want to break this, ano, you want to reduce this force para maghalo sila. Okay, para makapaghalo sila. Kung yan ay emotion, makapaghalo yung liquid, ay yung water at saka yung oil. Tapos kung sa, ganyan naman ay suspension, yung aking insoluble solids sa liquid medium niya. Alright? So, how do we measure class surface tension or interfacial tension? So, there are two ways. We have the capillary rise method and the Dunwithing method. Okay? Let's first talk about the capillary rise method. Okay? Ano, huwag kayo mag-alala, hindi kayo mag ito. Alright? This is a complicated uh, equation. Something that, uh, let others do this, right? but not us. Okay, kasi class, like, consideration dito sa angle. Kaya may kita dyan, may mga sign, may cosine. Okay, ng mga values. Okay. Now, class, normally kasi, di ba, if you have a capillary, the higher the surface tension is, mas malakas yung force that causes the um, the water to go up the capillary tube. Okay? So, yun class ang measure natin dito. So, the force of adhesion between the liquid molecule and the capillary wall is greater than the cohesion between the liquid molecule. So, the liquid spread over it and rise in the tube. So, the higher, the, the higher it rises, class, the higher will be the um, surface tension that's being created. Okay? So, are we good? So, ganoon naman sa klase. So, usually, ba, mas manipis ang capillary, mas tumataas yan. Mas mataas yung akyat ng tubig. Okay? Tapos, pag habang tumataba na tumataba yung capillary tube ko, okay, mas lumilit ng lumilit yan. So, then, class, we can use that to measure the force. Okay? Of the, um, of the surface area. Or, or the surface tension. Sorry, surface tension. 
Now, what about in the do no ring method? Okay, similar to this class, pero this time may force measuring device na ako. Okay, I have a device that measures the force. So I can now directly measure ano ba yung force exerted by the surface. Okay, by the surface of my liquid. All right? So it's used to measure surface area or facial tension. The principle is simply based on the force necessary to detach a platinum iridium ring immersed at the surface or interface, which is proportional to the surface, which is proportional to the surface tension. So, class, anong ginagawa ko dyan? Uh, Napahin nyo na gumawa ng ano, balloons? Balloons. Na yun yung, ganun. Di ba, class, mag mo yung, ano, yung panggawa ng balloon? Notice yung class, habang inahat mo, di ba, dumidikit yung tubig bago, bago maghiwalay? May dumidikit na tubig, like this one. Uh, eto, tata, tingnan nyo ito. Okay? Di ba kas dumidikit yung tubig dun sa gawaan ng lobo? Okay, dumidikit yun habang inahat mo ganyan. Now, of course, class, pag mas matapas, ngayon, ang ginagawa kas ng dunoy ring, dunoy, I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, sorry, I haven't checked. Okay, pero dunoy ring method, okay, it measures how much force is needed para maghiwalay sila. Para maghiwalay yung ring dun sa liquid. Can I guess that? Are we good? Okay, so basically, class, it just measures the force needed to break this. Kailangan ma-break ito. Pag nag-break na yan, ma-measure na natin yung force that's required to break this. And again, class, this ring is specially made. It's made from, pla it's a platinum iridium alloy. Okay? So it's a special metal. It's an alloy. Hindi ko lang alam kung bakit yun ang metal na gamit nila. I guess it's lighter. So it's easier to measure its force. The force generated when you're pulling the ring upwards. Okay? Okay. Now, adsorption of li at liquid interfaces. So surfactants are molecules that are adsorbed in the interfaces. Okay? So sabi nga natin, kaya na nagahalo yung um, tubig at langis kasi doon nag-exist yung, yung surfactant natin or emulsifying agent. So the other term for surface acting agents is amplifile. So sabi ko nga sa inyo, class, amplifile can have a property wherein it's both whether it's the oil, whether it's the water, or whether it's a positive charge, whether it's a negatively charged ion. Okay, so hence molecule or ions have an affinity for both polar and non-polar solvents. So surfactants class are basically amplifiers. They can exist both in polar and non-polar solvents. And the way we assess class the property or the um oh, ito? Uh, yung capacity class ng isang surfactant is with the use of the HLB system. HLB system class refers to the hydrophile lipophile balance. It's a way of measuring substance solubility within water or oil. So using the HLB system class, pwede kong malaman kung saan bagay ang aking surfactant. Bagay ba siyang gamitin for oil and water emulsions? Or mas bagay siyang gamitin for water and oil emulsions? How do I know this? Now class, ang HLB value natin, if it's um, greater than 10, okay, if the HLB value class is greater than 10, then I can say that my surfactant is better suited for making oil in water emulsion. Okay? Now, if the HLB value class is between 1 to 10, then I say that it's better, mas maganda siyang gamitin for water in oil emulsions. Sorry, clear? Okay, so class, here's one way of computing for HLB. So that's 20 times the molecular weight of the hydrophilic groups over the molecular weight of the whole molecule. Meaning class, kapag, kailang, ang, kapag atitingnan ko ang aking uh, surfactant, I need to know the molecular weight of the hydrophilic groups of my surfactant. Of course, medyo mahirap yun. So we have another formula here class, which is a lot easier. Same lang naman ang principle niya actually. Okay, HLB class is 20 pa rin, yung constant value. 20 times 1 minus saponification number over its acid number. Now, you might be wondering, ang sa, ano ba saponification number sa, sa acid number? You'll learn more about this class in inorganic medicinals. Magkocompute kasi kayo nito for this, uh, for this one. Okay, pero in this case, class, I just want you guys to know, saponification number class simply measures the average molecular weight of all fatty acids present in the sample as triglycerides. So remember, class, that surface active agents are both hydrophilic and lipophilic at the same time, kaya nga siya tinawag na amplifier. So, ang saponification value class, it will simply determine the average molecular weight of the fatty portion of your surface active agent. Maliwanan ko tayo doon? And those that exist as triglycerides lang. 
So yung fatty acids lang. Yung, ah, yung, ano, yung lipid soluble portion ng ating um, surface active agent. Okay? Pero kasi we want to be more technical, saponification number is the Num is the amount of potassium hydroxide needed to saponify one gram of your fat. Okay, pero never mind. Hindi naman natin, hindi yun ang concern natin dito. Okay, an acid number naman class, on the other hand, is a measure of the number of carboxylic acid groups in a chemical compound such as a fatty acid or a mixture of compounds. Okay? So, okay, mag-aala, hindi mo kayo pakocompute ng saponification number at saka acid number. Okay, kung magpapakompute mo naman ito, ibibigay ko na yun sa inyo. Alright? Okay, pero kasanggapin mo lang dyan is simply, yun na nga, uh, 20 times 1 minus saponification number divided by your acid number. Nakastitingnan mo lang kung ang value niya ba is greater than 10 or less than 10. Okay, if it's 1 to 10, sabi nga natin, ang masasabi natin it would be, ang surfactant na yun is better suited for a water and oil type of emulsion. Okay? And if it's greater than 10, then we say it's uh, suited for oil and water type of emulsions. It's a surface active agent suited for oil and water type of emulsions. Are we clear? Okay. Kasi again, class, the type of emulsion will greatly depend din sa type of emulsifying agent na gagamitin natin. So are we clear? Okay. Very much dependent, class, ang type of emulsion sa type of emulsifying agent na gagamitin natin. Are we good? Okay. So, kaya naman ako, sa, sa quiz natin, tatanoyin ko lang dyan. I am using this surface active agent. So, papakumpit ko nuwari yung HLB value. Okay, so, compute HLB value. Tapos, next question ko eh, what, will be the, what type of emulsion will, ano, will result after I use this uh, emulsifying agent, say, for example. Right? Kasi usually, kasi class, ang, ang, natin, ang ratio between oil and water should be 50-50. Okay, now, 50% water, 50% oil. As much as possible. Again, magkakatalo lang talaga yan sa type of emulsified agent na gagamitin ko. Which will tell me what will I form. Is it a oil and water or a water and oil type of emulsion? Okay, looks. We try to keep it at 50-50 class to prevent breaking. Para hindi mag-break yung ano ko, emulsion. Okay. So here are some of the HLB values that we usually use. Uh, ano yung applications niya? So, ano yung bawa? Kung HLB range is between 1 to 3, usually ganyan sa anti-foaming agent. You know what's anti-foam? Anti-foaming agent. It's used to prevent the formation of foams. Ah, halimbawa, downy. Alam niyo yung downy? Ano yung Fabcon? Anti-foaming yung class. Iniiwas, tinatanggal na yung mga bula-bula after maglaba. Kaya nga diba, usually yun yung yun yun ginagayat na huling banlaw para matanggal yung excess, ano, excess detergent. Excess bula-bula. And ganun. So that's anti-foaming agent. And so on and so forth. Alright? Here's a sample problem class. Napakita ko na lang sagot. Huwag na tayo mag-compute. Maday yan naman kasi ito kasi. Given na yung S, given na yung A. So, all you need to do is multiply 20 by 1 minus 45.5 divided by 276. You'll get an HLB value of 16.7. Okay? Which tells me it's hydrophilic. Okay? It's suited for uh, oil and water type of emulsion. Right? Very good. Okay, nothing too complicated, class, right? So, ano yan? So, ganyan lang yan. Ay, parang mali natin. Ano ko dito, ha? Wait. Ibo ko given, sir. Joke, joke, joke. Baliktad, sabi ko na yan. Baliktad nga ang nilagay kong ano. Sorry, kinapipaste ko. Okay. Ito yung sagot dun sa unang tanong. Ito yun, ha? 166 minus, ano? 205. Tapos ito naman yung sagot sa pangalawang tanong. Baliktad rin ko na nga. Ba't ko pa ba, ano? Ah, basta alam yun eh. Okay, baka yung baliktad na lang pa sa, okay? Bali ako nang nakapipaste. Ayan. Basta yun na yan. Alright, sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. Can I correct that? Okay, please note. Yan. Pero plus wise, madali lang talaga yung computation yan. Wala kayong problema. Because I won't be asking you guys to compute for the separate saponification acid value. Okay, you'll have a separate lesson for that for inorganic, in, or inorganic medicinals. Eh na naman ako, tapos tatabihin naman. Hindi, matututo na yun sa physical pharmacy. Patay tayo dyan. Anyway, so adsorption of solid, solid interface naman. Okay, so usually takes place from either an adjacent liquid or gas phase. So the study of absorption of gases is connected, it's concerned with the removal of objectionable odor from room and food, okay, operational of gases, operation of gas mask, and measurement of particle dimensions of powders. So class, normally, uh, di ba gumagamit tayo class ng, say for example, charcoal. Okay, you guys are familiar with charcoal, right? 
Charcoal class, ginagamit natin yan to adsorb odor from, ano ba, sa ref. Oh, bawo yung ref, di ba? So, kasi class, it's one of the properties of charcoal is it's very porous. Kaya na-adsorb niya yung mga stuff in the environment. Okay? So, so obviously, ang charcoal natin is a solid interface. Right? So, the go solid gas interface. So, usually, we had we have two terms here. The adsorbent and then the adsorbate. Okay? So, pag sinabi kas adsorbent, this is the material used to adsorb the gas. Such as, say, for example, charcoal. Pwede rin pawas. Okay? Or um, alum. Okay? And then the adsorbate, on the other hand, refers to the substance being adsorbed. Now, class, please take note of this. Huh? Pag sinabi natin adsorb, anong pinakaya doon sa absorb? Adsorb. Yun. Very good, Mr. Reyes. Okay. Pag sinabi natin, class, adsorb, surface level lang yung attachment. Okay. So, halimbawa, ito yung charcoal ko, nag adsorb lang sa surface yung mga impurities, halimbawa. Yun, yun. Pag absorb, ibig sabihin nag-mix talaga siya. Okay? Okay. So, what are the types of absorption uh, phenomenon that can happen? So, first class, we can create van der Waals adsorption or forces. So, meaning the bond between the solid and the interface or and the substance na, na yung adsorbate would be van der Waals. Van der Waals forces. Right? And that's a physical type of adsorption. So, so, so the adsorbate can be removed from the adsorbent by increasing the temperature simply. So we call it desorption. Okay, normally class, ginagamit natin to for desiccants. Are you familiar with desiccants? Familiar kayo? Okay, good. Now, kasi ba desiccants are, are made to absorb water in its environment. Okay? Nakita niyo yung silica gel sa mga sapatos, sa ba nakalagay, sa bags, bagbagong bilian bags. Diba? Kasi leather is very sensitive to moisture. Kaya nilalagyan yan ng silica gel. Okay? To absorb the water in the air. Right? So, adsorb. Ang turn natin dyan. Now, kasi, you know what? You can actually reuse your silica gel. Ang, ang gagawin mo dyan, kasi iinitan mo lang yung silica gel para mag-evaporate yung water molecules na inadsorb niya para ma-reuse mo ulit siya. Have you seen a desiccator class? Nakita mo kayo desiccator? Desiccator class, parang isang malaking taldero siyang ganyan. Glass gawa. Parang uh, ganyan. Tapos ganyan siya. Tapos sa ilalim niyang class, may is parang ano. Uh, parang may tasa bilog-bilog dyan. Tapos andito yung mga desiccants. Crystal desiccants. Usually silica gel ang gamit. Okay, dyan pinapatong class yung mga substances or mga chemicals ninyo na ayaw niyo magkaroon ng moisture. Yung mga hygroscopic, ano? Hygroscopic chemicals like sodium hydroxide. Okay? Familiar ba kayo sa sodium hydroxide? So, feeling ko ninyo pa nakikita ito. Familiar lang po sa term lang, pero hindi pa. Okay. Kasi kasi ang sodium hydroxide usually comes in the form of pellets. It's a pellet form. Now, ang problem kasi kasi sa sodium hydroxide, it's very hygroscopic. Alam nyo lang sa sodium hydroxide, it's basic. Okay. So, it's hygroscopic class, just so you know. Uh, Pag saan natin hygroscopic class, it absorbs, it absorbs moisture violently. Okay? Malakas siyang sumipsip ng tubig sa environment. So, ang tendency class, ang sodium hydroxide ko, nag-liquify. Okay? So, if you want to prevent it class from liquefying, usually nilalagay sa isang desiccator. Okay? So, ipapasok siya sa loob nito, dito yung bote ng ano mo, sodium hydroxide, nilalagay din sa loob ng desiccator para hindi siya mamasa-masa. Hindi siya mag-liquify. Right? And then next one class would be chemical adsorption. So this one is usually an irreversible process. The adsorbate is attached to the adsorbent by primary chemical bonds. Now class, dito ngayon pumapasok yung kitang nating process known as chelation. Familiar? Ang term na chelation? Okay, di ba? Nagpo-form tayo class ng cages that are chemical ang bonds that na nakikreate natin dito. Okay, not just physical bonds. Physical bonds, van der Waals lang yun eh. Okay? So are we good? Alright. Now, solid-liquid interface naman, usually, um, applicable to some mga like dyes, alkaloids, fatty acids, organic acids, and bases may be adsorbed from solution onto solids such as charcoal or alumina. Okay? Or tawas. Okay? Alum. 
Now, the absorption of this teletoxin by various place, okay, yun yung ano, um, principle behind this, solid liquid interface. Sabi na dito is solid gas interface. Okay? Yung gas dito is water, in the case of yung sodium hydroxide ko kanina. Okay? So, ayun. Or moisture in the air. So, this one, was solid liquid interface naman would be, say, for example, did you know, class, that diatabs before is activated charcoal? Okay? Nabutan nyo, feeling ko, hindi nyo nabutan yun eh. Dati, class, ang diatabs is activated charcoal. Ginagamit siya kasi for food poisoning. Okay, bakit? Kasi, class, yung activated charcoal, ang ginagawa niya is, ina-absorb niya yung toxins that is responsible for food poisoning, which is causing your LBM. Okay? Kaya dati, charcoal, yun. At ako, guys, familiar? Maraming gina ba? At a full guy? Wala na kasi yun sa market nowadays eh. Parang ano. Anyway, so yun class, gawa sa charcoal yun. So nowadays, we don't use that anymore kasi natatakot yung mga pasyente. Halimbawa, pag poop nila, anong color ng poop nila? Okay, very good. Black. Ano nyo ba kung anong indication pag black ang poops? It could indicate, it could be, uh, it could indicate na may bleeding ka sa stomach. Okay, so kala na, oh my God, dinudugo yung stomach ko. Yung pala dahil nag-take lang siya ng charcoal, activated charcoal. Okay, so we don't we no longer use that anymore. Kaya nga ngayon, ang loperamide, pinalitan ng... Ah, sorry. Ang diatabs, pinalitan ng loperamide. Okay, so, loperamide na lang. Anticholinergic na lang. Okay, to, to stop the movement of your bowel. Pero dati class yun. Yun ang ginagali. Kaya yung charcoal, mag-absorb siya kasi ng mga kung ano-ano. Yan, at a full diet and kaolin absorb intestinal content. Okay? Yung mga usually toxins. So on and so forth. Now, the most popular solid, to, uh, the most popular adsorbent class na ginagamit natin yung charcoal. Pero please take note class sa ibang charcoal sa activated charcoal. May difference yan. Pag may isipin niya, sir, di ba uling lang naman yung activated charcoal, right? Hindi. Kasi pag may makita kayo sa facial wash nyo, mayroon activated charcoal. Ay, may charcoal. Gagamit ko lang ako ng charcoal sa, ano, bibili lang ako ng charcoal. Ibang piso lang yun eh. Sino gagamit ko sa mukha ko? No, please don't. Okay, may difference class between activated charcoal from regular charcoal. Okay, so class, activated charcoal is a residue from destructive distillation of various organic material treated and it's, take note, ah, technically the same sila, pero it's treated. May dinagdag kang substance, substances dyan to increase its ab adsorptive power. Now, class, what's not a destructive distillation? It's the term generally, uh, generally applied, okay, when you're processing organic materials, tapos, you're processing this, you're burning it, in the absence of air. Okay? Or pwedeng may air, pero konting oxygen lang. Para may matira sa, para may matira tayong charcoal. Are we clear? So, kumbaga, it's a product of incomplete combustion. Kasi kung complete combustion yan, kailangan may presence of oxygen, right? Eh, kasi pag may presence of oxygen, ang matitira sa dyan is abo. Hindi ash yun. Okay? Ash kasi is the product of complete combustion. If incomplete ang combustion, such as destructive distillation, what is left class is either soot or charcoal. Are we clear? Okay, so yun. Now, kasi mo pinagkaay ba ng charcoal sa activated charcoal? So class, uh, charcoal is a carbon residue dehydrated from burnt organic materials. While activated charcoal, same din naman, pero class is heated at very high temperatures. Okay? And in terms of porosity class, porous na si charcoal eh. Pwede naman yun eh. Pero mas porous pa si activated charcoal. So, temperature-wise, okay, always higher ang temperature na ginagamit kapag gumagawa ka ng activated charcoal. And its use as class is mainly for medicinal purposes or to remove toxins. Are we clear? Are we good? And class between the two, must find ang particles ni activated charcoal as compared to the regular charcoal. Alright? Okay, pwede naman siguro pa. Hindi, no, no, no. Hindi pwede pang ninis ang uling sa mukha. Iitim ka lang. Okay? Alright, so principles which uses solid to liquid adsorption. Uh, usually, ginagamit natin class ang charcoal or alum for decolorizing solutions. Okay, nadalasan ka sa limbawa, pag nag-experiment tayo, we want to remove the color. Okay, the color form. Pwede natin klase palaanin sa charcoal, activated charcoal. Okay, papadaan na sa mga gulgas, maglabas yan, clear liquid na siya. Okay, uh, pwede rin naman adsorption chromatography. Okay, uh, sa QC na to. Detergency and wetting. Now, dito tayo mag-focus ngayon. Okay, detergency and wetting. When we say detergency class, obviously, anong unang mabasa isip nyo? Ay, Ariel? Okay, well, pwede. 
Okay, kasi kasi ang purpose ng Tide or Ariel is para mag-absorb ang dumi sa damit natin doon sa detergent. Okay, na gamit natin. And then, and then of course, the principle of wetting. Okay? Ano mang isa din class pag, ano, uh, yung principle of wetting? Okay, or what, what we mean when we, say, when we talk about wetting agents? Okay? A wetting agent class is usually a surfactant. Okay? A surfactant that when dissolved in water, it lowers the advancing contact angle and aids in displacing an air phase at the surface and replacing it with a liquid phase. Okay, kaya ito lang naman yung klase. Normally, di ba, kapag, kumari, itong surface, I have a surface here, okay? Plus, pag ang itsura, try to drop a water, put a droplet of water, okay? Lagyan mo ng tubig yung class. Pag wala ka nilagay sa glass, or minsan sa, 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 sa phone nyo, sa phone nyo na lang, sa phone, maglagay ka ng drop of water dyan, okay? Malinis yung surface ng phone nyo, eh, malinis. Pag sa inyo class, di ba, ang droplet mo, kumakalat agad, tapos parang ganyan siya. Parang ganyan yung shape ng droplet, right? It means class yung kanya yung angle of repose niya. Okay, yung ito yung tang contact angle. Okay. Pag contact angle niya class ganito, mababa yan. Pwedeng less 45, pwedeng less than 45 degree angle. Okay, ibig sabihin class, yung tubig na yan, okay? Mabilis mabilis mag-spread. Mabilis mag-spread sa inyong cellphone. Okay? Try niyo lagyan ka ng mantika to. Lagyan niyo ng mantika. Okay, pahiran niyo ng butter. Of course, hindi naman siguro gagawin niyo, right? Sa pinggan na lang. Okay, try nyo, pahiran ko ng, <coughs> excuse me, kaya ang hirap ng anok, kung wala ka talaga ng sarili experiment, no? At hindi, hindi mo appreciate, eh. Okay, pero kasi ba, lagyan mo ito ng mantika, spread margarine, or ano, or butter, lagyan mo ng droplet ng water. Ano yung sure ng droplet ng water? Mapapasin nyo, kasi pag nilagyan mo yan ng mantika, tapos yung, nilagyan mo ng droplet ng tubig, ubuumbok ng bongga yung tubig. Correct? Correct. Ibig sabihin, class, hindi makapag-spread yung water na yan because of the interfacial tension created by the margarine or the butter you spread in your cell phone. At cell phone ang ginagawa ko, example, plato na lang. Okay, sa plato. Yun yung siguro gagawin yung sa cell phone, right? Sa plato. Okay, pag nag-spread ka ng butter, lagyan mo ng tubig. Bakit may ito nyo kasi umuumbok ng bongga yung water. Yun kasi dito talaga yung contact angle. Okay? Yun yung contact angle. So, class, kapa, ang, ang purpose kasi class ng surface active agents is bawasan yung contact angle na yan para mas mabilis mag-spread yung water. Pag mabilis nag-spread ang water class, ibig sabihin, mas madaling ma-wet yung ano, yung yung product natin. Okay? Or yung ating particles. Say, for example, yung solid particles. Mas mabilis siya mabasa. So, pag nabasa siya class, mas mabilis siya mag-dissolve. So, are we clear? This is especially true class for suspension. Or, actually, emotions din. Okay? As much as possible class, we want it to have a lower contact angle. Remember this class, ha? Lower contact angle. Okay? Equals higher wetting. Okay? Mas mabisa ma-wet. Sige sabihin class, faster solubility. Increase in solubility sa water. Are we good? Are we good? Okay. So, you check class. Now, ang wetting agent class, ano bang ginagawa na isang wetting agent or a surfactant? Actually, surfactants are basically wetting agents din naman eh. So, it allows class the contact angle of water to be lesser. Para sabi siya mag-spread. And hence class, nakapenetrate niya yung mga solutes or, sol or solid uh, particles na kailangan natin matanggal. Okay? Or madissolve sa water. Are we clear? Okay. Alimbawa na lang class, ito na lang magandang example dyan eh. Okay? Okay, di ba? Naglagay ka na, na sa platito. Sa plato, nilagyan mo ng margarine sa tuktok. Nilagyan mo ng margarine dyan. Okay, tapos nilagyan mo ng droplet of water. Di ba sabi ko sa inyo, uumbok yan ng bongga. Mataas ang contact angle niya. Budburan mo ito class ng joy. Huwag, anong budbud? Put a drop of joy, ano, joy, uh, joy liquid soap. Okay? Because uh, joy class, yung joy liquid soap na yan, is a detergent. It's actually a surface active agent. Pansin mo kasi, anong mangyayari sa tubig na to? Sa tingin nyo. Okay? Once na nilagyan mo ito class ng joy, ng liquid soap, may kita mo class biglang gaganyan yan. Mawaw, liliit yung contact angle niya. Kasi ibig sabihin, natanggal yung nagkakos ng ano, natanggal yung margarine. So yes class, mas mabilis kayo yung ano, um, mas mabilis kayo mag-spread yung water natin. So repeat, it reduces the contact angle of your um, of your particles, of your uh, solutes. 
Are we good? Okay, basta tandaan nyo lang po class. Ito lang naman gusto nang maalala dyan eh. If you're using class as surfactant, surfactant basically reduces the contact angle. Okay, para mas mabilis ang wetability ng ating mga solutes. Okay. Para mabilis siya humalo sa tubig. Yun lang. Are we good? Okay, yun lang ang purpose yan. So, applications of uh, wetting. So, usually displacement of air from sulfur, charcoal, and other powders for the purpose of dispersing these drugs in liquid vehicles to allow its um, solubilization. Okay, nakakita na ba kayo sulfur powder? Sulfur powder, no? Hindi nyo ba nakita? Natry nyo na bang itunawin ng charcoal sa tubig? Ayun, kung may time. Ayun, okay. kung, kung may time na yun, subukan nyo. Lagay nyo ang, ang, sa isang basong tubig, magdikdik kayo ng uling. Kahit yung ordinaring uling lang. Di ba, hindi yan natutunaw? Lagyan mo ng joy. Okay? Kasi yung joy class will reduce the contact angle between the charcoal and the water. So, allowing the charcoal to be easily wetted. Magulat ka class, parang natutunaw yung charcoal dun sa tubig. Okay? So, again, this was supposed to be one of your experiments din. Alright? Pero sadly, we don't, we don't have a way for you to see this experiment. So, kwento-kwento na lang tayo. I hope may imagine nyo naman kahit pa paano. Right, so or another one is the displacement of air from the matrix of cotton pads in that is just so that medicinal solutions may be ad absorbed for applications to various body areas. Displacement of dirt and debris by the use of detergents in washing of wounds or washing of your clothes na lang. Okay? Alimbawa ko, sila may dumi-dumi dyan. Okay? So ang gusto natin class is mabilis siyang sumama sa tubig. Diba? May dumi sa damit mo. So anong ilalagay mo sa damit mo? Talagay mo siya ng detergent. Okay, para ma-dislodge, sumama sa water. Okay, ma-dislodge yung dumi sa damit mo. Di bag, ano pa ba mga sumakapit sa damit natin? Okay, mantika, kung makalak kang kumain, spaghetti, alibawa, dami namin dito nga 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 nga. Okay? Hi, birthday! Kaka-birthday lang pala ni Miss Pihoto. Happy birthday! Thank you po, sir. Uh, ayan. So, hindi ka naman, hindi naman, wala naman siguro magkalat ng spaghetti sa damit nila. Kung sakali, lagyan lang ka muna ng detergent. Okay, para mabawasan yung contact angle ng mga dirt na kumapit sa damit, kasama yun sa water. Okay, so that's how detergents work. Alright, so the application of medicinal lotions and sprays to the surface of skin or mucous membrane. So detergent C class simply is a complex process involving the removal of foreign matter from surfaces. Again, detergents class are basically surfactants which reduces the contact angle okay, of the dirt to the water, allowing its solubilization in water. Alright? So the process includes initial wetting of the dirt and the surface to be cleaned. Uh, next will be deflocculation and suspension. Deflocculation, suspension, emulsification or solubilization of the dirt particles. And the last class is the formation of foam. Okay, foaming of the agents for entrainment and washing away the particles. When we say entrainment class, kaya nyo pa naglalaba tayo, kailangan bumubula ang labada. Bakit? Kasi class, pag bumula yan, ibig sabihin, yung dirt na nakakapit sa damit mo, ang angat. Okay, yung bula na yung class will cause the entrapment of the dirt inside the bula. Inside the foam. Actually, hindi bula pala. Foam. Foam ang parang term. Okay? Kaya, di ba, pag ang labada mo hindi bumula, ibig sabihin, hindi niya kayang tanggalin yung dumi. Correct? Okay, sa so mga naglalabas sa inyo, pala tandaan class na maganda ang nilalaban ninyo is pag bumubula siya. Alright? So, pag bumula yung class, i-rinse mo, kailangan tanggalin mo lahat ng bula. Bakit? Kasi nga, nandun sa bula na yun, yung mga particles na naka-attach sa aking damit. Alright? Are we clear? So that's how detergents work, class. Okay? Okay. Are we good so far? Alright. So applications class of surface active agents would be, uh, again, multiplying agents, pwede, gumamit, pwede siyang gamitin as detergent, okay? gamitin as wetting agents, or as solubilizing agents. Okay? So most of the active agents class can be used for any of the ano, any of these. So wetting agents can last again between 20 or the 30 solution. Pwede naman na. Okay? What else? Uh, foaming agents. Okay? Anti-foaming pwede rin. Antibacterial agents as quats. Yung quaternary ammonium compounds. Ginagamit sa class as um, antibacterial agents. Usually ginagamit for debridement of um, debridement ng mga sugat. Okay? Pag sila natin as debridement yung nililinisan yung sugat. Nakakita naman kayong diabetic foot? Okay, diabetic foot class, di ba? It's an open wound, kadalasan mahirap gumaling. Matagal gumaling kasi diabetic nga. So, nagkakaroon ng formation ng kung ano-ano. So, class, ginagamit natin pang, ano yan, pang tanggal, uh, pang debris would be, well, hydrogen peroxide or quaternary um, ammonium compound. 
a protective agents, and other than that, it aids in the absorption of drugs in the body. Right? Okay, so that ends our topic class for um, module four. I think this was module four, right? Okay, so that uh, that's pretty much it for heterogeneous um, systems, okay, both for colloids and for coarse dispersion. Okay, with of course sidelines having to emulsify agent and surface active agent. Right? Are there any questions, class? But just remember, class, uh, emulsifying agents are generally surfactants. Okay, surfactants, yeah, so surfactants, may category tayo dyan. Is it emulsifying agents, detergents, sabotic agents, solubilizing agents, blah, blah, blah. So basically, they just fall under surfactants or surface activation. Here we go.